Hello and welcome to episode 117 of the Misanthropod. I am Snipe and as always I'm joined by Wib. Say hello. Hello. I am also joined by the lovely, the pleasurable, the immeasurable Drummer Matt. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> How are you lovely gents doing today? I'm doing alright. How are you Matt? I'm, I'm distracted thinking about how many ways I can in fact be measured. Um. Well, there's at least ten. Yeah. I can think of at least five ways to measure you. Yeah, and one of them is secret. <laughs> yes, is is it is it your finger? <laughs> you measure you measure drummer Death. mats. You, <laughs> you measure drummer mats like you measure horses in hands, but you do it in fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. thought it's <laughs> just like whiskey. I was kind of no. I was kind of worrying because I was like, oh yeah, yeah. You measure measure drummer mat in fingers. I was like, what? Like depth wise? Like <laughs> what's the? You just stick your finger in his mouth. It's how long it takes for him to bite. <laughs> yeah, that's the measurement. Well, I mean, has... It's a time-based yeah. me- the measurement. It's a time-based really. measurement. <laughs> okay, that sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> and not correct. That's why it's a secret measurement. Yeah. <gasps> anyway, Webb, how are you? <gasps> I- I'm okay, I've already been asked. <laughs> You're just you? asking each other. How, yeah, how are you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I'm great, I'm alright. Yeah, how are you? Oh. No, that's not. Snipe, sorry, I apologise. <laughs> In my okay. defence, you were the one who distracted me. Okay, in my defence, I'm always the one distracting people. <laughs> yeah, so that's fair. it's I mean, my fault for maybe... not being used to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like that's I true. bit I bit Wib's elbow earlier, and he tried to shake me off, and I nearly fell off the bed. And then it was it was obviously his fault. <laughs> and then like, I did it like by the third time, he actually nearly just kicked me off the bed. And I'm like, "What the fuck is your problem?" He was like, "Technically, it's your fault, like an idiot." That is how I speak. Yeah, <laughs> that is one hundred percent how I speak. Go to pub. And I was like, what? What? Yes, I'm well known for my broad regional accent. Yeah. Well, it's not my fault. Like, okay, so I can't be blamed for that because your elbow elasticity is legendary. So if I bite on it, and s- I can swing off your elbow. It's pretty fucking great, actually. <laughs> Would you mind if we started talking about podcast subjects rather than yep. talking about the relative elasticity of my elbow skin? Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Best sentence we... ever. <laughs> and we've got a title. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me write that down. Relative <laughs> elbow. Elasticity skin. has one C. Elasticity. Okay, there we go. There we go. You actually wrote that down. I did write that down. I mean, your writing is so poor, it looks like you were pretending to write it down. But yeah, I, I know my handwriting is terrible, but there's no need to let people peer behind the curtain like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we do have one thing to mention. Like, one very important, important bit of news to mm. mention before we get into the podcast for real. Yep. So, um, in Derby, the city in which we live, um, it has been snowing basically all day, and we've got like half a foot of snow. It's actually been snowing over most of the UK. It's, mm. Yeah, but like, in well, I'm not in most of the UK. I'm in Derby, though, aren't I? Yeah, I am. For the most part. For the most part, yeah. Um, and Usually. Yeah. We thought we'd go for, just pre-podcast, we thought we'd go for a bit of a wander. And, and just kind of, you know, because having a wander in the snow is really cool. I like the Quite sound literally. it makes when you when you walk through f- it like does fresh the, snow oh, and it goes crunch. Oh. Literally, oh. like, it was over my fucking boots. It was like, Which, yeah, okay, if you like, live in, like, Canada or somewhere, that might not sound much. But for the UK, that's pretty impressive. That That's probably the deepest I've seen it in the UK since I've, like, lived here. Yeah, the only time... It, I, I think uh, since you've been over here, it's only snowed more than that, like, once. Mm. And that's, like, that week where we got, like, stuck at a gig venue. Yeah, that huh. was... Because it, it just decided... Well, we start... nearly got stuck oh, more shit, accurately. Yeah, but... yeah. yeah, and it took us two and a half hours to make a 40-minute drive. Yeah. It was actually pretty legit. And it was like a legit thing. Like, we might have to sleep at the maze tonight. The maze was a, a venue in Nottingham. Was a, was a venue in yeah. Nottingham, yeah. yeah God rest could, his uh, soul. I don't know if it's been reopened under new management. I mean, probably well, I mean, not at the moment. It's COVID, well, yeah. so yeah. no. But yeah. What, but anyway, the important thing is... We went to a field. We did. Okay, so there's a park relatively near us. 
And when we went for the walk, we went into this park and um, like we were looking around and it's, you know, kind of, you know, it, it, a lot of it hadn't been touched. So it was like. So, of course, Wib, like, you might think I'm the one who starts flailing my arms like a inflatable, like, car balloon thing. But no, it's Wib that does that and starts Naruto <laughs> running through untouched snow. Oh, shit. I didn't, I didn't actually Naruto run. I should totally Naruto run through that snow. That would have been amazing. See, that's why I didn't say anything at the time. Oh, shit. I'll do that now. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm going out after the podcast. That's, that's, my, that's my evening sword. Well, I mean, um, you have been meaning to get more exercise. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, there's, there was like, there's like a big field and... There was a husky that was just fucking shitting themselves. <laughs> yeah, the husky joy. was loving it. They were like... <laughs> But we went out in this, you know, the dim light. That beautiful kind of, like, weird light that, like, snowy environments have, where it's quite illuminated. Oddly illuminated while still being dark. Yeah. And we saw what, I don't know, it was, like... A nursery or garden or spawning pool of <laughs> snowmen. Say, s- <laughs> say spawning crash. A small a spawning crash of snowmen. There was like ten of the damn things. They, literally, it looked like something you would see in an SCP article. There was there was a gigantic one. It was like eight feet tall. That was huge. Yeah. Its head was the size of a lot of the other ones. Like bottom the uh, ball. It was weird because <laughs> it was like bottom sli- it was ball. like an, bottom ball, it's and it was like le- it was like it was leaning at like a seventy five degree angle. So it was like looming. <laughs> And it actually had a carrot for a nose. <laughs> but there was a couple that I wanted to mention because, you know, there, there was a lot of different variants of the yeah, basic Yeah, there was an theme. actual snowcock. Oh, I was getting oh, to that. Nice. I was getting to that. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the couple that I wanted to mention was, that, yes, there was a snow penis. Good. Uh, it, which was about, it was about four feet tall. Yeah, it was about four feet nice. tall. And, like, they modelled the uh, the um, the corona of the, pe- the, the, the crown-shaped helmet yes. of the penis. Nice. Which was like, you know what? Bon- good attention to detail. Right down, you know, right down to the banjo string. They'd like done everything. Yeah. It had a big old pair of balls. Like, yeah, but the balls were like, you know, the whole kind of like eyebrows are meant to be sisters, not conjoined twins. These were like distant cousins. <laughs> it it almost had like a ball on like each side almost. <laughs> it was just like, well, I mean, I'm not here to body shame. We don't know how the snow person that had that the penis, snursen. the snurson. We don't know how they would have been sitting. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, and, and the balls could have just naturally sat like that. <laughs> Maybe, yes. yeah. Um, but the one I really wanted to mention was there was a fucking eldritch monstrosity one that was, there's a subtle... Oh, hor- God, that one. Yeah, there was a subtle horror about it that I just want to mention. So it was a regular-ass snowman, It was you know, cute. It had the sticks for arms. Sticks for arms, three balls, typical, you know... Like typical a, snowman. Almost a Krogan. Um <laughs> <laughs> but but for the head, instead of like just a regular head with a face on it, it just had a perfectly circular hole all the way through it. It was like, you know, the size of like, you know, like a tin of vegetables. It's like you could put your whole fucking arm through it. It was like it was. It was it. It was so fucking ups, upsetting to see. We definitely encountered an SCP. It's like yeah, that was the one that was alive and is probably on our doorstep right now. Yeah, I do feel it was getting close to us every time we turned around. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, that there was, and I I look forward to. Um, ho- I hope they're all there tomorrow so I can go and look at them in like the light yeah. and see them properly. <laughs> yeah, and then we find out there's no one there. <laughs> They've just fucking left. They've all left. Yeah, they've all left. <laughs> Although, I've, I, honestly, I've listened to loads of creepy pastas and, like, spooky kind of stories um, around Halloween that involve basically, oh, yeah, I needed a pumpkin to carve, and it's got, like, giblets or a human head in it or something like that. So it's like, and there is, like, there, I think there was a, a horror story I read that literally had just a dead body inside a snowman. Isn't that the plot of the very bad bad film, The Snowman? Which which has the main character called Harry Hole. That was the snowman we met, Mr. <laughs> Hole. Yes. <laughs> Harry Hole, yeah. he's back from the snowy depths. It's like it's like he had in, in the original book, he had like I think it's like a Norwegian book or something like that. And yeah, and his name sounds more it's like uh, it would normally be like Hule or something. Mm-hmm. And they decided to anglicize it into Hole. Yeah. Um because whoever made that movie is just a fucking deviant. And needed to be stopped. Well. 
Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to tell everyone about the weird snowman crash we saw because it was, it was really yeah. cool, and, and the weird face, faceless, face. And there was snowman. that one at the very far end, that like the one that had been ostracized from the group, that was like just a standard like five and a half feet tall snowman, but from like a hundred and fifty yards away, you could make out its eyes and mouth. Yeah, it was because quite its creepy. head was really big, and someone had just like put f- two fist-sized holes in it for the eyes. That was the thing because you couldn't dis- you couldn't actually clearly see the face, but you could make out where its face was, and that was somehow scarier. Yeah, <laughs> so it was actually super awesome. The suggestion of a face. <laughs> yeah, and we saw we saw some dogs. You pet like a you pet like a. I pet a little dog, yeah. Oh, what was it? It was one of those it was little, ugly dogs. It was a little bulldog. A little bulldog, yeah. yeah. Pet little bulldog. Who had a little jacket on? <laughs> okay. If okay. you ever want me to just start crying, mention like just show me a little dog with a fucking jacket. I will yeah. just die. Uh, but after talk, after spending ten minutes talking about elbows in snow, um, we should probably get to the podcast. Proper. Oh yeah, podcasting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we are podcasting. We're not just oh, God, talking. Got work to do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. It's me first, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, shit, okay. What have you been up to, Wibblet? What have I been up to? God, I can't believe people are people and seeing like the bits we normally cut out there. Wow, <laughs> Just yeah. figuring out who went, who's Every, supposed to go first. Yeah, they'll be like, wait, they don't just automatically and telepathically know who's going next? Dislike, unsubscribe, <laughs> dispatching murderers to your current location. You don't want to show people... Activating pe- Harry Hole the snowman. <laughs> you don't want to show people how the snow sausage is made. Oh. I have a feeling I know. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I haven't, I haven't actually snow, been doing that much in the last couple of weeks because I've been um, really heavily working on the next video, which uh, will be out um, like a week after this podcast goes live. Ooh, or nice. not. Fucking whatever. It should be. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, but uh, I've done a few little bits. Uh, one is that I've spent an unreasonable amount of time this month... Um, Pa- finally painting my Forge World Grot Mega Tank. Uh, ah, finally yes. got it done. Yes. It's so fucking gorgeous. It is very cool. It looks. Uh, it you're looks like a hobby promotional like model. Day eighty one or something ludicrous. Yes, um, I'm actually thinking of getting to a hundred and then having a bit of a break. Mm, okay. Um, I was hoping you'd do that with sixty nine because that's the sexy number. Yeah, but I, I wanted to beat my previous record, which was seventy seven. So. I, I will pay you fifty p to stop at ninety eight or something. I will pay you 57p to stop at 101. No, I'm stopping at 100. Fuck y'all. <laughs> if I die poor and alone. I literally have, like, how much is that? 65p on the table there? Next to my really pretty nail varnish that I'll let you wear as well. I it's mean, like a deep scarlet, but it's also got, like, a really smooth metallic kind of sheen to it, dude. Ooh. It's so pretty. Well, anyway, uh, I, I spent yeah, I spent a, a lot of my free time painting that because uh, if you don't know, the Grot Mega Tank is like a big like land battleship thing uh, that um, I, I got like as my, my birthday present, uh, mostly from from Snipe. Although I think I put some birthday money towards it as well, didn't I? Mostly from elsewhere. Um, which um, yeah, I got it for my birthday last year. So I've been putting off painting it because it was such a big task. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I finally got it done, and I'm, I'm super happy with it. It's you gorgeous. Can... If you look at at Wib does tweets on Twitter, it's probably the most recent thing because he's probably never going to use Twitter again because it... he's like, I don't want anyone else to see anything else I've ever done because this is the best. <laughs> I, I, I'm probably going to make some some terrible tweet about a, a sci-fi no one cares about in the intervening time. Let's yeah. be honest. Um, yeah, probably, but, but it will I mean, be. I think that's what people expect of you. Yeah. It's Hobby Street 80, day 81 or whatever, so it's fine. It's easy to find. Um, aside from that, I also finished off Star Wars Squadrons, because um, I don't think oh, I nice. finished that the last time um, no. did the podcast. Um, yeah, that has a really fun uh, campaign, really enjoyed it. Solid fucking game. Um, kind of, it, would, it would be nice to see an iteration on it, because I, I think it's like a solid groundwork for how to do that kind of game in the modern day. Mm. Um, you really want a joystick, huh? Actually, no. I have oh. no interest in getting huh. a, um, a a joystick for it. I, I could, I've been wanting yeah. to play some myself. I think I'm going to ask Longfang a little and be like, Longfang. Oh, it's really fun to play in in uh, the the fleet the AI fleet battles mm-hmm. uh, where you just you know join a group of people and take down an AI. I think I'm gonna really annoy thing. him though because I'm only gonna play X Wing. Why would even that... even no. Imperial a- X Wings are the um, like jack of all trades. They don't do anything bad. 
<laughs> they don't do anything. <laughs> so you can have a whole, you can have a full team of X wings, and it'll be fine. It's not like you know, if you join a full team of B wings, and you're pretty much fucked. Yeah. Um. By the way, I main B wing, so. <laughs> B wing. I fucking love playing the B wing. Just. <laughs> Just flying up to things and then just un- unloading a massive salvo. <clears throat> you know, you'd love being a bumblebee. Would you care to explain that sentence? Well, bumblebees, they go and they rub themselves all over pollen and then they go and dump a fucking heck ton of it. I don't know, in the The, be- the bee hole. The bee hole? Yeah, the bee hole. Big old bee hole. And there's like... Pff. And like you'd you'd just be a slut for that, I think. I feel like both of you could probably do with going and reading Isn't the Wikipedia a... entry uh, on bees. No, because I mean, bees are like it, right? yeah, like bees are like the weird cuck of flowers. Because like bees go and like get covered in plant jizz and then go and like artificially inseminate a bunch of other plants, and then go home with the leftover residual cum. To feed their family. To jam it in the bee hole. Oh. Yeah, just jam it in the bee hole. Just pound that cum in the bee hole. Okay, so you need to read the Wikipedia page and you need to stop watching internet videos. <laughs> I can't just in remember general. the last time I watched an internet video. Like, just YouTube should just be off limits to you. No. <laughs> no, I don't think it should. Anyway, Squadrons is good. Oh, um, I'm so yeah. excited. I really want to play. Yeah, it's good. And since you, uh, oh yeah, you, I was about to say you could try it in VR, but your VR headsets. Well, the I, thing I, that you, I, I yeah. can. I just need to get a USB cable, and I could use that here because it's not one that you oh, need to move okay. around for. So I could be sat at my desk, but with the VR thing mm. on. So okay, that's, yeah, that then, is doable. Yeah, then if you do get it, try it. Um, I, f- I find it is easier to play, but obviously it's a bit of a faff. Mm. Um, but it is it's definitely worth having a few shots at because you can just totally play the campaign with with VR on if you want. Um, so it does actually mean there is a game that you can play a full length campaign in VR and it not be a big deal yeah, because it's nice. just so it's so, so it's um, such a minor part of the actual experience. It just elevates it a little bit. So, yeah, um, I also started playing. I played about four or five hours of it. Uh, Control. Ooh, uh, yeah. Which is, yeah, from uh, Remedy, uh, people that made, it's like, actually, Max Payne and Alan Wake. Yeah, it's in canon with, like, Alan Wake. It's in canon with I, Alan I watched... Wake, and it references their own version of Max Payne because well, the they don't have the rights to it. Because, like, mm. in the um, Alan Wake universe, Max Payne is supposed to be written by Alan Wake, mm. but they couldn't do that because boring copyright bullshit or yeah, whatever. Yeah, because Rockstar owned the rights to yeah, I think so, um, yeah. Max Payne, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, cause I know all this because I watched Peter Lewis stream um, the entirety of Alan Wake and Alan Wake's American Nightmare, and he just loves that shit. So he mm. was just gushing all the, uh, like he was just spitting hot <laughs> truths. Yeah, we'll say because I've tried to play Alan Wake, and I just didn't really get on with the game very much. But I'd too seen too much Kasabian, <laughs> far too much Kasabian, <laughs> which is any amount of Kasabian in my opinion. But you know, okay, your mileage may vary. We don't actually believe that. It's just a funny thing to say. I I, I don't like Kasabian. No, I'm, I'm not a fan. But um, like you know, I don't care. No, I wasn't making a statement about like people are wrong for liking Kasabian. <laughs> I was expressing my opinion that I don't like Kasabian. I don't like that. I don't like that thing. Fuck that thing. Fuck you. I I'm going to actually find you I and stab know. you. I don't know why you're making a thing out of this. <laughs> oh, because um, uh, some people, including me, uh, have a bit of difficulty with that kind of thing. Of like just going, oh yeah, if you like this, I'll kill you. So some people can like, you know, take it a bit personal. Okay, well, I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. I, I, I didn't. Yeah, I, I'm sorry just... that Whip threatened to kill you. <laughs> I, I just said I didn't like them, and I, I, I didn't like them. Yeah. Kasabian is it. one person. Kasabian is what? John Kasabian. John Kasabian. <laughs> John Kasabian. I feel yeah. like this is probably... Or Kasabian I... is actually... How anyway, Control. <laughs> Control is a very good video game. Ah, yeah. um, okay. Um, so... It's also a really, really good garbage song. Okay. I like that song. Okay. Mm. It's good. Um, it's... Yeah, so, was like, there any term... mar- I saw no marketing. The first I heard of this game was from one of the tech channels I watched was doing a um, benchmark, like a frames per second benchmark thing, and they put control on. I was like, is this game new? Is this game old? I had, I'd seen nothing about it at all. 
Yeah, it came, I can't remember exactly how long it came out. It was like a couple of years, maybe. Like a year and a half, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell because... Um, Lockdown is hell. I, do, I don't know how long 2020 was, so, you know, it's... 2020 lasted approximately seven and a half years. Um, But, but yeah, it's not super old. Although, I will say, I, I am uh, in optimization, it does seem to have this thing. I don't know if it's, like, across the board, but it seems to do this with certain setups where it will run like absolute ass and will do so whilst only using half of the resources of your machine. Oh. Like you'll you'll pull up your like stats of like what's being used on your thing and it's like, oh I'm I'm like barely running thirty frames a second and um I'm using half of your graphics card, half of your processor <laughs> and like a tenth of your RAM and you're like mm. then what are you doing? <laughs> Controlling itself. Um so <laughs> I'll put it this way. I like the game enough that I have I'm I, I've what I've done is I've made it so that it like it's actually rendering at like the step below ten eighty and then um upscaling it. Um I'm doing that rather than running it at a native ten eighty mm. because I just can't get it to run smoothly at that. Huh. And I'm still thoroughly enjoying and loving the game. Huh. Well, I mean, what's the guy's name? RT? <laughs> He, like, the janitor is a fucking badass, and do you mind if I spoil that one thing? Because I think oh, it's just yeah. such a fun thing. Mm. Like, your character has an inner monologue. RT, the janitor, can hear your inner monologue and actively, in real life, reacts to it, and it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Not, like, he doesn't, like, knock on the door of your actual house <laughs> and is like, hey, cousin, with his fucking all-over-the-place accent. But yeah, no, he, like, like, what is it? She'll think, like, wow... It's nice to see a friendly face. Uh, a friendly face. It's better than no face. And he's like, "Oh, that'd be terrible if you didn't have a face." <laughs> and she's like, "Um, um the v- okay." Yeah. If you're not aware, I'll give you the basic overview of Control, which is that you go into a building called the Oldest House. That's like a big, brutalist structure. It's a very historic house. <laughs> it's it it is at least sixty years old. <laughs> um, That's a little joke for the Europeans out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's basically it's it's the home to the Department of Control. That is basically a kind of they they um, investigate and contain paranormal things. It's very SCP Foundation like. Secure control, mm. protect. <laughs> um, but it's. Um, like written in this very like obtuse manner like it, it it's you gain control of a gun really early on and you just become the new director of the uh, of the whole institute because you've picked up the gun uh, the service weapon as it's called um and it's this weird gun that can like mutate its shape and when it reloads it just kind of like glitches out yeah it's, it's really cool and like the moment that you pick that up and become the director all the portraits you've seen around the place on the way into like the head of the, the like executive office all of the portraits that used to have the old director's face on it now have your face on it well isn't it like um she refers to something by like a name and suddenly everyone's like yes that's what it's called and they all start just calling it that because that's its name now because she's the director so yeah yeah, and yeah. It's like that is so fucking um, cool. and the, the, it's it's has that um unique thing of having all of these like notes and journal entries that you really want to read like cuz normally you'll kind of you'll read the important ones but you might not read all of them because quite often there's a lot of filler in that stuff and this does have a lot of them um these are ones you should read the very first one is like saying things that are not allowed inside the oldest house um which How is much does? which is like you're not allowed smart devices or phones uh, you know of any kind also you're not allowed things that are an iconic representation of something else e.g. rubber ducks <laughs> they're just not allowed in there just because i I love how like that's so weird but it's not stupid yeah there's it's a lot like, of okay why could that be yeah the actual the base gameplay is like you know you you just run it's a third person shooter and um you have different abilities you unlock and they are pretty fun but like I, I, the combat's not like the big seller of it it's just a really interestingly written and like framed kind of story it's going for and i don't really want to give away anymore because it's yeah. just Really cool. If you get a chance to play it, play it. But yeah, bear in mind, it does have some performance issues on some machines. I will say, the face rigging in it looks gorgeous. It does. It's really good. It's a very good looking game when you can get it looking right. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, um, one. Uh, I, like I say, I haven't beat it yet, but I 100% recommend it. Um, even even just the first few hours, I'm like, you know, this is fucking great. <laughs> like, this is very, very good. Um, if you're a bit on, on the fence, um, although it does kind of spoil the story, but if you've got no long-term memory like me, uh, then you'll have already forgotten everything that is spoiled in the video uh but curio on the video on the channel curio there's a really good uh, video about the um oh they did a video on that yeah uh, okay. that's that's why i, I like because i'd seen like clips of the combat and was like i mean that looks the fun combat enough. does look pretty fun i was like that looks fun enough but not enough to bother playing it <laughs> and then i watched their video on it and i was like oh shit no yeah i should totally play this this is right on my alley because it's it's sort of like what is it it's referred to as new weird <laughs> um, sometimes, which is like the name for that sort of Lovecraftian influenced nostalgia fueled sort of things. You kind of Stranger Things like horror. Okay, stuff. okay. Um, but yeah, uh, and it's it sort of fits a bit into that kind of territory. And yeah, um, like I said, that that video does spoil the entire plot. But like, uh, I've forgotten. You can it. never remember. Like, I could literally be like, "Hey, uh, this happens," and you'd be like, "Oh, okay." And then like tomorrow, you'd be like. Wait, what? This happened? Because you my, discover it, like, my, organically. My, my long-term memory only seems to work for, like, media that I have personally consumed. But if I watch a video about it, I don't remember it, like, the next day. Every morning <laughs> I have to show him the YouTube video I made in the style of a uh, a really cringy, Yeah, guys, what's up? It's your boy. It's your wife. Just so he <laughs> remembers we're married. <laughs> He, I mean, I did. I he was... keeps giving me four stars <laughs> out of ten. I have a Rotten Tomatoes rating of three. Three <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> uh. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say, Matt. What do you have have to bring to the table? <laughs> How many tomatoes is your marriage worth? <laughs> oh, at least I don't know. Oh, I'm trying to think of a tomato point, and I just I just can't. Um, Don't worry, you'll catch up soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay, good. That'll do. Yeah, fine. Um, I'm not doing oh, much. Oh, catch up! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> <sighs> I feel nothing but pure hate. <laughs> but yeah, Matt, what have you been up to? Uh, not too much. I've been feeling slightly under the weather, so I've not been wanting to oh, be too ambitious. Um, but we were watching some, it is the best, if you're just feeling like a little bit ill or just like, it's very easy going and relaxing telly we've been watching. We've been watching a show called The Detectorists and it is a British TV show about metal detectorists. And okay. it is just basically, it's two, It's based around two mates. 56 year old Colin from Yorkshire. <laughs> Not quite, but like, you know, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's based on two mates that just go off into a fit into like the field or whatever and they just wander around with their metal detectors out and just chat and then there's like three series of this so like some drama and like things happen but the drama is like you know drama it's not really it's enough to what keep the plot like, going oh 56 year old colin from yorkshire ran over tr- like 60 year old trevor's son because he felt like it and wanted to see something die <laughs> you see, I was thinking more like they both well, they, they, they both they, detected they, the same thing. They and both it, detected the same and, thing, and then they had a minor scuffle, like you know, a bit of an, an uh, you know an argument like because Trevor. one of them wanted to take home whatever scrap of and metal. And then they found. Colin killed Trevor. Okay, no, it's slightly more than that. There's like rage. at one point, there's like another because they're, they're part of like the I've forgotten what town it is they live in. It's like some semi-rural little town in like. I think it's in Essex, but it's like far east Essex, so it's almost Suffolk, and it feels very sort of Suffolky and countryside-y. Mm. Um, and like another metal detecting club gets involved and wants to like do on the same land. Gang a little bit like, yeah. But uh, the best thing about the other club, actually, there's two of them. It's and they like just the look... English Sopranos. <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two of them in this, this like rival club, or well, there's more, but there's two of them, that, like the main two. And they look a bit like... Um, Simon and Garfunkel. So this is where this joke <laughs> is made, and then every single time these two come on the come on the screen, you just get the little um, like little acoustic guitar, little clip of a start of like a Simon and Garfunkel. It's, 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 that yeah, it's it's just very. 
very That's satisfying. That's the most English thing it's, I've ever heard. And it's like my beautifully mother. shot, and like it's always somehow there's never been a rainy day. It's always like sunny, and the camera work went in between like scenes, focus on like flowers, and you see little insects flying around, and it's got like a nice acoustic-y, folky soundtrack, and it's just yeah, it's got Simon and Garfunkel. So, you know, basically, yeah. Personally, at one I'm point wait you find out anime that... adaptation. Um, oh, yeah, at one point you find so out good. one of the one of the names is actually Paul. So it's just like and it's uh, yeah, it, height of comedy. Paul Funkel. <laughs> like, Paul, si- Paul Simon, like Simon and Simon yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's it <laughs> Simon is very, and Paul Funkel. Um, slight 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 the downside of it is just as a, a slight warning to anyone who goes off and watch it. There's a couple, just a couple of like slightly sexist or slightly homophobic jokes in there, like, and it's by characters who would probably like in a small town towards the countryside. There is like you know fifty odd or whatever. I have no doubt that probably that character would say that, but that doesn't it just isn't really necessary in the show. It like doesn't Wait, really add anything. So I thought but... this was like more of a documentary. No, no, no. It's like a comedy drama. Thing. Oh, okay, because I thought it was a documentary and I was oh, there for no, it. No, now no, it's no, like no. scripted. I'm like, I don't care. No, no, it's scripted. It's a, it's a, it's a BBC <laughs> comedy series or something. Okay. I possibly should have said that at the start. That's fine. Cause <laughs> yeah, because that, that did sound so real. Because straight up, that is something that would be on British TV. Yeah, like. and it'd be on after like Antiques yeah, Roadshow. I mean, that's, that's fair. No, if you want to watch something like that, if you want to watch something like that, that is just a like. It's I am not watching the documentary. Great Bake Off. No, no. There's a TV show. It's Bob Mortimer and oh god, it's a, there's another comedian of a similar sort of age. Basically, they both had like heart attacks or something, and they just they were told by the doctors like <laughs> till the fuck out. So basically, the two of them just go fishing, and then there's a camera crew there just watching them, like, filming them fish and just have a chat while they're at the side of the lake fishing. I okay. mean, like, if you'd said that to me ten years or ten years ago, I would have been like, "Oh, that sounds like fucking dog shit." Why would anyone just want to listen to people talk? And now I'm like, oh, I do it every day <laughs> for but, free. Um, Bob Mortimer no. and Paul Whitehouse. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's just there's just a show, and this this is I've only seen like a few episodes of that, but this has got a very similar feeling, apart from it's you know scripted. But mm. yeah, it's 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 very good. It's very funny and. It's very much something you can chill and watch if you're feeling like a little bit just like not quite ill, but just a bit of a headache and a bit of run down. You can just sort of a lounge on the sofa and just like it's really easy going. Comfortable caveats, television. Yeah, like slight caveat that I set aside, which I can forgive it for, but like you might not. And that would be entirely justifiable, but it's not like egregious at all. But yeah, it's slightly there. And I'd feel like I had to say something in case someone watched it and was like, oh. So, but yeah, Food. that that aside, it's very pleasant <laughs> and very British in for whatever that means. <laughs> I, I can't imagine like the Americanized version of the series at all. But yeah, I don't know. Kind of want to get a metal detector and wander around the field now. So you know, does that <laughs> <laughs> and like have war? Can I ask you, like, do you currently possess a flat cap? Yes. Okay, I think just I have two. I'm not even surprised because I was like, I can imagine you out in a field, mm. in in like your fucking the ugliest cardi- cardigan. I know what the thing is if you go if you go if you go metal detectoring, mm. like you need to wear camo seemingly. For if I've learned anything from this series, you need to wear camo. Yeah, yeah you got to sneak up on the metal. Yeah, apparently. Ah, yeah. If the metal knows you're coming, it'll it'll scatter. Yeah. Roman coins are startle easy, but they'll be back in in greater numbers. Yeah, that's what screwed the Roman Empire's economy. <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh fucking hell. The value of it just plummeted. Yeah, well, that makes sense because they didn't wear camo; they wore like big red skirts or whatever. Yeah, so, exactly. See, yeah. that was the thing. If only, out. if only they'd invented camouflage and metal detectors, then you the Roman Empire would still be around. The unmitigated gall to fucking sass Drummer and I about bees, and this is the shit you're coming out with about ancient fucking Rome, right? <laughs> fucking great. Okay. But anyway, I possibly one wouldn't... rule for you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I possibly wouldn't have spoke about that on the podcast because it's not exactly in the wheelhouse of like vaguely sci-fi or. Horror what or is whatever. the real house but, of this okay, like, I've done, I haven't done anything okay. else, so that's what I got. Matt, shut the fuck up. You literally, you and Wib, just literally have like a weird docking kind of wank about trains every other podcast. It doesn't. I mean, no. 
unfortunately, I would like it if we had more opportunity to, to like to talk about trains. Because <laughs> I learned that, you know, docking to... actually has a purpose. So, like, if anyone who doesn't know, it's for people who have penises and foreskins. They put their wee-wees together, like, head-to-head, and then you kind of just go, om, with, like, your foreskin. And it means you can both jack off, like, the same dick at, like, the same time. So that's, like, the point of docking. It's like, oh, okay, I get it now. Okay. So you guys do that about trains, is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, Um, we both have, like, a train each, and then they go into the same tunnel. Yeah, but your trains have foreskins. (laughs) But then what's the tunnel for? I Sorry, I'm just hung up on that. I'm just thinking of what the mallard would look like with a foreskin. I don't know what a mallard is. Is it like a big bird? Probably a train. A a context train. clues. Yeah. Yeah. Big but, blue uh, train. Um, yeah. With a foreskin now, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me done. Okay, is, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, yeah. Fucking whatever. Sorry, yeah. Snipe. <laughs> I really want you to do a preview image that is just foreskin tree. I am not photoshopping a foreskin onto the mallard, no. <laughs> onto a duck, so its head is just a foreskin. It doesn't have a beak. All the beak is coming out of inside the foreskin. I it just looks to... like, you know, like when Kenny in South Park like pulls the cords on his fucking hoodie real tight. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because that is how our YouTube channel gets banned. <laughs> I mean, maybe... Whatever. Yeah, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Yeah. Uh, fuck all. Oh. Okay, I played some Phasmophobia, which, okay. uh, w- with Lynn Squiggly, who also was a complete shit and bought it for me as well, because she is very lovely. <laughs> um, which is kind of like, you can play it in VR, but you can also play it not in VR. And it's basically just like a ghost detecting kind of game where you go in and you have like certain ghost tools to detect ghosts so you know you go in with like um a temperature like a what is it like a temperature measurer a thermometer (laughs) and it's like it'll tell you on the whiteboard in the van like oh you need to um figure out do you have like a an always sunny pepe silver like sylvia um like board it's just a white blur. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I'm oh. sure, uh, you know what? I'll check the Steam Mod store and see how it is, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll check the uh, fucking workshop. There yeah, we go, that's good. the word for it. But yeah, and it's got like, oh, um, record a temperature of at least like f- like at like four degrees Celsius or like, you know, ghost riding is a thing so you can take a book in and it actually listens to your microphone. Mm. Um, and also, once you get a like, amount of range away from one of your teammates, they can't hear you unless you talk over the radio, which is a different push to talk. Mm. But the thing is, ghosts are listening. So, like, I was stood in this kitchen with Lynn, and we were like, okay, we're going to piss off the ghosts. So, and, like, it tells you their name. So you just keep saying their name, and they get like they can get really mad at you and start throwing shit at you. It's it's like it's actually super intense. I didn't expect it to yeah. be that spooky. Do you? It's like the point to like exercise them, or is it just no, to discover you, you them? No, you just go okay. What kind of ghost is this? So you're just trying to figure out what yeah, it is. Yeah, you figure out what it is, and then because you have like a little journal, and you come up and you then you there's like three criteria, and it's like oh, what are the three criteria? And you go, oh, I have at least a cold temperature. Mm. And then on the very bottom, it's like the 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 spectre haunting this house is, and then it's like a you click mm. through menu. Is and it a then, poltergeist? Is it a ghoul? Is it a is it a is it a demon or whatever? You mm. know, stuff like that. But like the more kind of like bits of information you have, so like, oh, we've got low temperatures and um and ghost riding, and then it'll delete as applicable on the bottom, like, this is a whatever. Mm. So it'll only show the, the the apparitions that have those as, like, a symptom of a haunting. Mm. And then, like, you know, you get, like, ten bucks. <laughs> and then you can you Fucking spend... Fucking gig economy. Yeah, right? And then you spend <laughs> it on, like, you know, oh, like, you get, like, another, like, like a, um, a blacklight torch or something. And it's, like, it is... It does get quite intense, especially because once um, you one of your teammates dies, they can't talk to you anymore. So it's just quiet. So, like, you could be playing and then someone hasn't spoken for a while and it's because they're dead, but you don't know. And then you're like, yeah, so it it is actually surprisingly Mm. spooky. I act. It's really good. And I have to play it. I have to ask her again if she wants to play it with me because it's really fun. No, that does, that does sound really cool. It's Honestly, it's a lot more intense than I thought it would be. Mm. And I'm not ever playing that in VR because holy <laughs> shit. 
that would kill me dead. Mm. Should I have a shot at playing it in VR? Yes. Okay. It would be funny. I will try it, and then I will I will do a small poo on the floor. Okay, maybe don't do that. <laughs> when I am scared by the ghost man. No. I've not tried to play a, like a legit horror game in VR yet, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, I've played mm, some things that... I've just been able to start playing legit horror games... Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking destroy my brain with VR horror. I've played a few horror-themed shit games, and those... Those were not scary, uh, <laughs> largely because they were like using like whatever was the cheapest thing, like walk animation to buy off the Unity asset yeah, store, yeah. and it yeah it didn't look so great. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I played that, and yeah, it's it's good. Mm. I, I, I and there's a lot of kind of um, there was one that Lynn and I did. It was in this big spooky house, shock horror, um, and we literally got nothing. Like, no information. We're like, we don't know what ghost this is. And then it killed me, and Lynn was like, yeah, I'm leaving, and I'm just saying it's uh, one of these. It's a, <laughs> it's a demon. Okay, fine. And the like, thing is, when you're, this when you're dead, you can walk around as a ghost, and you can hear what, you, what your teammates are saying, but you can't communicate with them. Mm. So can it's, they it's, detect, it's, 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 detect you with their, like, temperature things or whatever? No, but that, I think that would just be really annoying, especially if you're trying yeah, to detect them. Mm, yeah, okay. But, yeah, it, yeah. but, yeah, but yeah, honestly... It, I, I, like, there's loads of little touches in there, and I'm like, this is this is a really good multiplayer game. This is this is fucking great. Mm. So yeah, um, I can recommend if if like you know it it it's good kind of spooky like fun like um we were in a, a kitchen because we were like okay so this kitchen because it you kind of get like the detective kind of like brain in in there and you're like okay so this room is where um because you can set up cameras and go back to the truck and okay. look and stuff yeah. and you can turn on night vision and like we we put <laughs> we put a camera in this um living room and turned all the lights off because it was a night vision camera because we wanted to look for orbs because you orbs. can get orbs 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 motherfucker um, and like we went back to the truck and the ghost just turned all the fucking lights on and we were like, well, that's fucking useless. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> but yeah, it's just little bits like that. It's just really, yeah, it, it's really fun. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of fun. Um, I've also, I've watched the first few episodes of The Mandalorian with Longfang because he is a good egg and oh my God, I love that. It's, yeah, Mandalorian's pretty good, isn't it? It's, Hi everyone! Did you know the Mandalorian's pretty good? <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's fun. Don't have a massive amount to say because it's already been discussed on here, mm. and I'm not going to spoil anything. But I just I like it. And your baby's so cute. <laughs> that was that was the thing when I, when I watched it um, <laughs> because I was I was expecting because I obviously um, if you if you were in um, anywhere that wasn't the US. Um, we had to wait a while. We got we got the, the fun of like mo like Baby Yoda kind of spoiled for us because yeah. we just it was gifted and memed to death yeah. before it ever came out here. So unless you like went out of your way to watch it by other means, um, mm. then I will say Disney Plus has a watch together feature, which is fucking like honestly. Why doesn't every streaming service have most this? of them do now? I don't think Netflix does. But I think you need an account, and but they in like your friend links you, and then basically if you pause it, it pauses for you know, that kind of thing. So huh, it's it's easier cool. than syncing it, and it's it's yeah, um, great. Prime has it as well. I, yeah. I I don't know if Netflix has I've one. Never even I've never tried to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, lot, it's really cool. Yeah. And loads of them have it now, and there's also websites that do like third party versions. Yeah, of that. Watch Together I think is a um like the main one, and it's kind of shit. Honestly, like every time I've used it, it's like. It's gone massively out of sync, or it's paused for one person and not paused for the other, and it's like, eh. mm. but yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, on on this, it, it is good. It is good. Um, I liked that a lot. And uh, but yeah, I was, I was, what I was yeah. just saying there was um, that we all, we got it all spoiled for us. Mm, um, yeah. But uh, the one thing that I was surprised about when I when I did see it was, I still love the child. The hmm. baby is so good. Like, even though I, even though it was like the surprise and like lots of shots and things that were really cute, like got memed and shit. So I'd seen them I like say, before. I still seeing them properly. I was still like, I love the child. I will the baby, fucking die I, for I, them. I would kill for the baby, and I will do. I will, but I don't have a choice. Yeah. Um. No. But no. Um. Like every time the baby is on screen, I'm just like. And I'm annoying dogs everywhere. Yeah. 
Because, oh my god, he's so cute. Like, like, there's one part where Mando's fighting somebody who is apparently me. So there's a character in there called... Oh, what's her name? Like Cara Kim? Dune. Cara Dune. And people were, like, adding me on Twitter going, Hey, are you Cara Dune? And I'm like, well, apparently I am. Never look up the actress. But yeah, like... <laughs> Those two fighting, and then it just looks looks round, and the baby's just like having soup, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I love that baby <laughs> so much. I want a baby Yoda. They're so cute. They're the bestest thing ever. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Um, also, speaking of the Star Wars, um, I played through the campaign for Star Wars Battlefront Two, the new one, and it was really good. Like, because, uh, you know, there's a whole, like, honestly, like, occasionally someone will come into the stream and be like, oh, is this the PlayStation 2 one or is it the new one? And I'll be like, it's the new one. They'll be like, oh, I'm disappointed in you. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, it's it's like that kind of gatekeeper-y kind of, even if they don't mean it like that, it comes across as really like, oh, you're not playing the, the good one. It's like, no, I don't have the fucking rose tinted goggles for it. I mean, if you think it's the best, that's great, but also don't come in and basically go, oh, if you're playing this, I'm disappointed in you, because fuck off. Mm. And also I got the game for free, which I think was a perfectly reasonable price. Yeah, because Battlefront um, 2, which I'm sure everyone is aware of, uh, came out a few years ago and was um, the e- tipping... It was just EA. It was mm. microtransactioned up the arse and is... A sense of accomplishment. It, yeah, it is so many fucking like, long-term turns of phrase come from uh, come from yeah like the the like it gives pride and accomplishment sense, uh, yeah a sense of pride and accomplishment which i am as far as i'm aware is still the most downvoted reddit comment yeah. on reddit um but of course it, it the microtransactions have been removed they've been um, removed um i have not played the multiplayer and i i probably will only play it because my brother wants to play it with me and then i'll probably never play it again uh but the story mode is so much better than you'd ever think it would be. Ah, that's good. And, like, it, it looks beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous to look at. Um, the performance is, is pretty decent as well. Um, make sure you've got it in, running in DirectX 12, though. Uh, thank you, Prime B. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, and it's just, like, like the shooting and the maquette, like, the way it feels... Because it's basically you can play it third person or first person, but if you're playing as like a uh, an established law character like Lando or Leia or you know anyone like that, it has to be in third person. So you can like go, oh look, I'm playing as Lando, yay! You got to look at Luke Skywalker's firm buttocks. <laughs> Don't ever say it like that, but yeah. Um, and honestly, like pl- I like play it for the story because it is fucking brilliant it is so well written so well acted it's genuinely like, funny genuinely really funny like when it's like, trying a character to be funny called, it's like, funny shriv i think that's his name i probably got it wrong it's it's a weird made up name <laughs> but yeah he's fucking great and i ship him with lando there's a section with him and lando and they just bounce off each other perfectly it is so well written mm. and it is so enjoyable and yeah, no, it's like I was kind of sitting there going, I just want a movie with these characters because the gameplay, who cares? It's it's shit. Don't give a fuck about it. It is very, it, it like the guns don't really feel good. They they they're like pea shooters. Like you know, enemies take way too much to get you know to to die and whatever. But the act, the story and the characters is so fucking good. Oh my goodness, mm. absolutely love it. So yeah, um, I think it was it on at least it was at the time of like streaming it on Saturday. It was apparently on. Is there any deal? Someone was like, "Oh yeah, it's like six quid." I would happily pay six quid just for the storyline because yeah. it it was really good. And the thing is, it's got like um, the main storyline, and then it's got like free DLC um, for like what happens after that, and it's it's really good. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it sort of takes it because the um, original story takes place like it starts um, around the Battle of Endor. Yeah. Um, and then it cut and, and you know a bit and a bit after that going into like Imperial Remnant era um, and does kind of a, a space of time there and then it skips forward several years uh, for the DLC to like the sequel trilogy era. Yeah, and it's it's really good. Mm. It, it the, honestly. Though, like, all the actors were so fucking 
amazing. I, I did a little cry at the end <laughs> because, you know, it's not really spoilers, but Carrie Fisher shows up and I just fucking started crying on stream because I miss her. I miss my angry space mom. <laughs> and it was just really nice to see her again. Um, and yeah, like all the characters are fucking fantastic. Those like the main kind of like antagonist is just so fucking good. He's such He's a prick. Such a bastard. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. Well done, that guy. And it's it's oh, I, honestly, I could gush about the story for that for days. It is so good. I can strongly recommend it but don't i would have been so mad if i paid full price yeah and if you're wondering because obviously there was a lot of um obviously its microtransactions were very heavily in the news when it first came out yes. a handful of years back now and mm-hmm. um, yeah the if you're just playing through the single player and you're not worried about multiplayer um it's then a perfectly fulfilling experience the loot box thing because the loot box that you still still get them because like throughout the story there's like certain uh milestones like oh uh have this many headshots or like for example um and then at the end of like that mission or that play session or that play session it'll be like oh you got a loot box and it gives you pardon me it gives you like a uh like an emote or something but it's bugged every time i did it so i never got to see my emotes yeah but it was just like, okay, that's cool. So. Um, but but those are things all for the multiplayer. So, like, you can literally... Even though the, the, the microtransactions that caused it to end up in the shit aren't there anymore, the the rem- remnants of that system, you don't have to engage with it at all to play the single no, player. No, no. Like, the single player is just its own little thing off in the corner. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I didn't play it, but um, but watching through, I was just like, yeah, no, this is... This the, the, this is just really fun to watch. The controls are shitty, but like, yeah, yeah. Like I say it. I would absolutely play that through again just for the story because mm. it is so good. All the characters are so damn endearing. What well, I would love, to oh, see, I, I would love to see the creative team behind that make a game that was actually built for single player because oh. it's very obvious that the mechanics were just taking the multiplayer mechanics mm-hmm. and putting them in it, and also. Lando the, was the best. To with, play. The, with the exception of of the bit with Lando. All of the parts where you played as like mainline characters were completely unnecessary. It was just and to be egregious. To be fair, Lando's bit was also unnecessary, no, but it was also but, great, no, so it was fine. But Lando's part, there's a part where it's like, oh, uh, you need to lower this so you can cross because there's a bunch of stormtroopers chasing you or whatever. I'm not going to spoil it. And the objective is like, objective, lower the bridge, and you, you go press it and nothing happens. It goes, objective, ellipses, press some buttons, question mark. <laughs> and then you press a bunch of buttons and nothing happens, and then it just goes, just shoot the console, and then you just shoot. It's like, okay, that's got such a good sense of humour. It's like, honestly, I don't, like, none of the jokes didn't land. Yeah, no, it was, the, it was good. The, the start of the Lando bit is like, it's a bit like, because uh, he turns to Shriv and is like, oh, but you, you're going to say you have a bad feeling about this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> that was the only kind of, uh, kind of part. They, of they've, got, they've got to do the bad feeling they've about got this. To, line. You, what, you think to. that's bad. Uh, the Clone Wars especially is quite Every bad for Every episode. It, because they're like quite short episodes, but they try to squeeze in a bad feeling about this and a Wilhelm scream into like every every fucking episode <laughs> uh, they don't do it in every episode but they do it mm. enough that it feels like it's because it's, yeah. yeah, if you're watching it in that you're, you're seeing it every 20 minutes so yeah, yeah yeah it's a bit over the top at times but no um fucking adored the um mm. the solo player mm. <laughs> solo <laughs> you know like ben not do you know, do you know how he got his name yes you um, should watch an entire movie about it no i watched <laughs> jenny nicholson rant about it and that's enough solo is fine yeah. Don't if Solo is a fine movie to watch and then not think about. Okay. The moment you think about it, you'll start to have problems. <laughs> Fair. I mean, I'm not. I'm not interested. And, and, and honestly, L3, I think L 3s whole thing is it does leave a bit of a, just, a oh. sour taste in your mouth. But yeah. I, I'm with Jenny Nicholson. It would have been like way better if she like L three was just like a Dalek. Should have been an, an R one droid, mm. which are kind of Daleks. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, and that's what I've been up to. Hmm. So you know, um, it's a good job. That, it's a good job that we got all, all our, our usual stuff wrapped up in record time because Matthew, 
From what you've told us, we have a um, an actual literal stack of questions. Well, yeah, it seems that way. Um, I went through Yay. them, and I, I usually, you know, I'll, I'll go through the emails, and I'll, I'll try and reply to, to, I think I've replied to all of them. Yeah, apologies if I miss you off, but I go through and just do a quick reply. Even if the replies are saying, well, I'll ask the question later, is I'll try and say mm. something. Yeah. And usually, I, uh, so I copy out the highlights and the questions and bits and bobs onto, like, a document, so I've skipped through emails. And usually there's a page, or maybe a page and a half, two pages. We've got four and a half pages today. So, okay. Okay. So I there's a few. I don't know if that, if it's just people asking more in depth questions or I don't know. Anyway, there seems to be more, but we'll see how quick it goes. Yeah, this it's is because the... I asked a question about Pokemon. And everyone <laughs> yeah, <was> like, <gasps> this is the the bumper email special, I guess. Yeah. What's the email address, Wib? It's what the fuck is the actual real one? It's <laughs> thedramamat it's at the gmail dot com. Dramamat at gmail dot com. For it a second, is. I was thinking of the old one. Oh, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, a few people in the old me... one being like, you haven't mentioned the old email address for a while. Is it okay? <laughs> no, it's not okay. You know what really makes me laugh? It's like that thing from Scrubs where Turk's like, yeah, I've got, I changed my phone number, so it's called Tur instead of called Turk because character limit. And he's like, yeah, but I, I can't, I can't remember that. I can, I remember your old one, Phenomena Path. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, that's literally the problem we're having with this fucking email address. Anyway, yeah. the questiones, okay. my good sen- okay. questiones. senor. So, yeah, I feel like because there's quite a few, my um, paraphrasing and copying bits might not be up to their usual excellent standard. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, okay. That's, that's so, excellent standard, you first, say? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 that's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, first up, the girl who can't believe what Snipe said, what she said. No, yeah, the, oh, girl, the girl who can't believe Snipe said what she said. Oh my okay. god, I have never been called out by a person's name before. That's okay. Ooh. Snipe. Yeah. From an aesthetic standpoint, antlers or earmuffs? Oh, I mean, can't it be both? <laughs> but antlers, definitely. Okay, good. I mean, earmuffs are really cute. I have some um, little squirrel ones that somebody sent me from Canada. And this so cute. Yeah, I got those in the PO box. Actually, yeah, you did get antlers. You got antlers in the PO box I as well. I also got to be antlers. Fair. Um, I would happily wear them both out and just headbutt anyone who's not maintaining social distance. Yeah. So yeah. Um, ironically, breaking yeah, social breaking. distancing by doing it yourself. <laughs> yeah, but also breaking them. So it's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, snipe and whip. Okay, we get we're getting a little bit personal here. What okay, shoes okay. do you wear? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do either of you wear bunny slippers? I am literally wearing bunny slippers right now. She is, yeah. <laughs> They've got little fluffy ears. Oh my god. I wear boots explicitly. Uh, I have like one pair of running shoes and a few pairs of heels, but they're all black and boots for the most yeah. part. I, I I wear um I, I don't You wear what I buy you. I don't wear actual <laughs> Converse, but I wear things that look like Converse. Yeah, that <laughs> tends to be what I wear most of the time these days. There you go. That was okay. a really weird but okay. very fun question. And um, also, I feel super called out on my bunny slippers. I should really tell. I've never actually owned a real pair of Converse. I've owned like countless I've shoes. I've owned one pair. Yeah, I've owned countless shoes that look like them, but I've never mm. actually owned a real pair of Converse. I should maybe do it at they one time. They are nice, but they're like twenty pounds too expensive. Yeah, yeah I, sh- I should the, probably. It's the, yeah, Sam yeah, Vines boot for... thing. Yeah. Yeah. I should yeah. try it one time just to just, just to, to see, see how it feels. Well, you apparently yeah. they, they've like reissued them. They're, they're like All Star Two or whatever now, and they actually updated a design after however long, and they look very similar. But apparently, like they've just put it's way more padded in the in the sole now. That is oh. a big problem with like because they're not converse that comfy. kind of shoes because they are very <laughs> like there's like no arch support. Mm. They're not good for long walks. But yeah, or apparently the new like ones are one... good, but I've not tried them, so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, the ones I currently have, which are, uh, are like they're made Didn't by. Did we get those from like um, Sports Direct or something? Yeah, they're made by a company called British Knights, which um, I, I made a joke on Twitter that it sounds like a splinter group of the EDL that got kicked out because they were too racist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, you were wandering around in the snow in them. We pushed a car up a hill in them, which, uh, yeah, my boots, uh, my Cordura boots were actually really good at that, um, pushing car up a hill. And I even, like, picked up a lady while pushing a car because I'm so 
incredibly strong and buff. Um, but yeah, they're not great for grip, but the, the, your feet were pretty dry when you got in. Yeah, the fact that my feet were mostly dry <laughs> after being yeah. in snow that literally in covered them in shoes. their entirety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in canvas shoes, like pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah. um, but those those are like, uh, those have like way more padding in them than a regular Converse shoe. I've got one more And they're really support. nice because of that. So yeah, yeah I'd be, I would be interested. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how the... Uh, oh the, my God, the, how old are we? We're just like, oh, here are the pros and cons of canvas <laughs> shoes, you motherfuckers. That's, okay, that's... moving on, just in the interest yes. of lots of... I don't, uh, yeah. Um, everyone. <laughs> okay, this is a one-word answer. Okay. Favourite word? Come. <laughs> <laughs> C U M, yeah, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's it. The favourite word of the misanthropod is com. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, no, yeah, collective favourite word. Great. Um, a few other quick questions. Uh, I, I, I have no answer for this. Are you okay? Drum- Was it just how, like, po face I delivered that? No, it's just because I couldn't argue against it. I'm like, yeah, no, com is the funniest word. It is, it is the word that I find the most funny at the moment. So, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Draw on that. What about you? What favorite word? Yeah, trousers. It's really, Trous- fair. It's really fun to say trousers. It's fun. To okay, say. true. It's no cum. It's but, no you cum. Know, trou- it's. <laughs> <laughs> I have to send you pictures of these cum goblins I saw. Excuse me. <laughs> you know the little got like the cum goblins that are just like got little bit oversized t-shirts and boys baseball caps and they're going cum 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 cum. It's a comic. It's, it's a guy who's like going to like this wizard's like, oh, welcome to the magical like world oh. of enchantment. You see, I was Let's thinking... go in the cum cave. And the guy's like, what? And he's like, oh, it's just a name. Oh, here come the cute little cum goblins. And it's just like three goblins just going cum, cum, cum. Yeah, I remember that now because initially I was thinking of the cum sprites from Oglaf. No, no not yeah, the cum yeah. sprites from Oglaf. Well, you, I think you could get a plushy one, and it's like I defy anyone to get one of those. And then when their parents come over to visit for a cup of tea, explain what that fucking is. I don't, I don't know if you can still get it, but you used to be able to get one on a shirt, and I always meant to get one. <laughs> now, honey, you can just do that. <laughs> <laughs> make your own you know because we know how to do printing and yeah. you know ink density is a yeah, learned yeah. skill yeah. that we learned when we were uh, making merchandise for the band yeah. that we're in so yeah um, yeah yeah. yeah. I could also just spaff on my own clothes yeah, yeah. <laughs> just draw around it in like a what in like a <laughs> sort of draw a sharpie. smiley face on it <laughs> yeah I mean, just write can I come on your titties but write it like upside down so you can see it so anyone walking past who looks at you like a fucking barn owl, you're like, ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we don't, at the yeah. Santapod, we, while we love the word cum, we would advise against walking around with it fucking plastered all over you. I don't yeah. think anyone was suggesting that, honestly, but... Um, Just in case. Okay, next up we've got three questions. This is all, all still from the same person. A question okay. each, which honestly, I don't think I know the reference of either of them, or any of them, oh but we'll see. Okay, so first, drummer Matt, I saw the, the pony post. Is it a fetish or were you smoking something? Uh, I Did I post about ponies? Smoke. I can't remember. I, Just say that it's a fetish. Oh, well, no, you've got like a bit of a kid ear thing going down. Be, uh, enunciate better, please. This is how I talk, it sounded you like classist you, fuck. It sounded like you said kiddie ear. Kitty. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. let's not dwell. Let's not dwell. Um, <laughs> okay, Snipe. okay. Why yeah. did you need Wib to put your balls in the fridge four years ago? <laughs> That's an old Twitter post, that is. <laughs> I'm, well. I'm rapidly going through all the times I've ever had balls that needed to be refrigerated, and I'm just... You'd got some pork balls from a Chinese takeaway, and you'd left them out, and you hadn't you'd left them out. I, I, yeah, I was, I was like, in, in, like, in town, and I was like, hey, could you put my balls in the fridge, please? They need to be chilled. Yeah, and I, I posted it on Twitter. Um, of course you okay, did. Yeah. Right. good. Uh, that's what that is. Yeah. But okay. wow, what a good. strong was, fucking question! It was pork balls <laughs> that required How did you refrigeration. Not eat them all in one go. Man, pork balls are the best. There was we a lot of them. We had some last night. Yeah, yeah, ten usually, but God, that's they're fine. So good. They're, they're so, so good. good. And I, I think think I actually had... no, I had chicken balls last night because they didn't have pork ones, and they're. I prefer pork. Yeah, they're not as good. 
Mm. I prefer the chicken ones, honestly. Well, I mean, you can just be wrong. Okay. Yeah. But no, I think I had like chow mein with it as well. So it was kind of like I'd, I'd have okay. half chow mein, half balls. Yeah, I usually, <laughs> when I do that, I eat all of the balls and then I just have the entire portion of whatever else I've got as like leftovers the next day. Just <laughs> lunch for the next <laughs> three like, I could days, have half yeah. and half or something, but like the pork balls are just oh, the best Oh, stop bit. it. You're making me super hungry for yeah, Chinese food. Okay, move on. Like... Yeah. Yes. When will you comply with the Codex Imperial Infantryman's Handbook? Um, I don't know if we'll ever. Are, are we talking about like making a video about it, or no? Just, I think they're saying that they're going to gonna dob you into an inquisitor, yeah. or like a, a commissar, if you don't like, you know. Yeah, I'm fairly know sure like infantry men properly. aren't meant to like goblins. Uh, yeah, uh, never. Um, <laughs> uh, not not least because um, you know the uh, emperor fight can all suck my dick. fight all unjust authorities. Um, okay, that like, I'm gonna be real with you, honey. Yeah. That got real serious. Yeah, mm. let's um, okay. Just say come. Just come. Just come. Hey, final I won't, question. I won't, <laughs> I won't because too much come. <laughs> final question. Slightly more. Well, I understand this question a bit more. What do you edit on, and is there a free alternative? Presumably video edit, not because. Um, I mean, we, we edit on the podcast anymore. <laughs> we edit using um, Vegas Pro, uh, Vegas Sony Vegas Pro 15, uh, which we got in a humble bundle for pretty cheap. So just yeah, keep an eye on like humble bundle. I yeah. guess because like they do that every now and again. They'll have like oh a video editing um, like, um, bundle or whatever. Yeah, I, I honestly couldn't tell you what's a good um, free alternative because I've. We've not had to use one for a long time. Well, the last time like somebody mentioned Windows Movie Maker to you, you visibly shuddered. <laughs> I, I actually, like, I was thinking about the, the other day, um, I looked up some old videos that we made, like, way, way back, pre our, like, you know, current YouTube channel um, days. Pre talent. Uh, pre us being good at making videos. Pre and we made those playing. in Windows Movie Maker. And I was, and whilst I was watching these old videos, I, I was like remembering what it was like to use Windows Movie Maker. And like, I legit had, had like a moment where I was like, oh God, like, oh, it was, it, it made me feel bad. I got into like a fight or flight response. <laughs> you were literally uh-huh. triggered. Like, like it, yeah, because I was like, oh God, it was so bad. Like I was remembering like how many times you had to re-render things because it would just bottom out like mm. all the time or like where you'd have to like skew things in the timeline awkwardly because you knew that it would render it incorrectly if you did it how a normal program <laughs> would because it was it sucked so bad it really did suck um, but yeah just keep an eye on humble bundles is uh, yeah the only do. free alternative yeah. i could think of is i've used imovie before but it's free in very very big inverted commas it's free <laughs> but you have to own an apple thing so like how free yeah. is that really yeah. I know there are some decent enough free alternatives out there now, but yeah, uh, we've we not could, had to could not tell you, I'm afraid. Yeah. We, we've not had to use them for so long, but we yeah. don't know. So, sorry. Okay, moving on. Peter. Hello. I have a recommendation. In one oh. of the previous episodes, someone recommended that you watch Hell of a Boss, which I think was a YouTube series, if I'm mm. remembering back a couple of episodes. Um, they'd like to recommend another video from the same person called Has Been Hotel. Um, I they- have heard... Good things about it, and I've also heard apparently I'm in it. I'm in a lot of things people recommend <laughs> me to go watch. If people see if people see a grey haired character or if a muscly see, character, they're like it. If you. they see a muscly woman or a grey haired woman or like you know a woman with a lot of piercings, they're like it you. And you know what? It makes me go. You know that kind of like really big kind of like kind of happy smile every single <laughs> yeah. time because it's like thank you, thank yeah. you for basically telling me that. You acknowledge my existence when I am like when you're not consuming my like the media I put out, hmm. and not only that, but you're willing to take time out of like precious time out of your day to message me and say something nice to get real for a minute. That's just <laughs> that honestly makes my fucking day every single time, hmm. except for when it's Codex Tyranids <laughs> or Codex, Codex Australians. Australians. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, as for as for the question of what my favourite Pokemon is, it's got to be Haxorus. Is that you pronounce that? Haxorus? Haxorus? Don't think Which I've ever said that. Don't think it is. It's the big dragon with an axe for a head. Oh shit, yeah. Yeah. Um, because well, <laughs> Peter says it's got to be Haxorus because it's a big dragon with an axe for a head, like me. I'm like, um Oh. Oh. So well, so, so yeah. 
Well, we're welcoming here, Peter, who you, who is a big dragon with an axe for a head. That's a demographic I didn't know we service. Yeah, um, so no. thank you for letting us yeah, know. Yeah, good. thank you. It's, it's always nice to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, Mikkel. Hello. If you had to fight a fictional character, who would it be and why? So they're, they're, Frank they're, they're, Castle? They're... <laughs> no, 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 no. Frank Castle, because like halfway through we'd realise that he'd realise that I'm really strong and then we'd have to start fucking immediately. Like it'd be Buffy and Spike bringing that house down. Uh, if I had to fight a fictional character, it would be Chucky from the Rugrats because I could totally take him in a fight. That <laughs> is horrible. <laughs> no. He's an ugly baby. He... I could beat the shit out of him. Oh my fucking God. No. <laughs> Don't fight babies. Wow. <laughs> Come on, all all the babies in that that thing they all look like cuz the animation style like the they one, all look no, like no, weird no, homunculuses. No, no, the I'm worst pretty sure one, they're not human. The worst one is the giant baby that Angelica imagines like cuz she thinks like cuz they think that her mom's going to have another baby and it's like this giant fucking I may have thing. I may have blanked that out. Mm. I I'll show you afterwards because yeah. honestly it'll ruin your fucking day. Like people in the comments if you if you know you know, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. But no, I definitely like. I'm I'm not gonna kill a baby. I'm just gonna fuck Frank Castle because honestly, he needs to come. It, it's like I read that comic book and he was just like, God, like I don't feel like he literally is just like, you can't pray for my soul. I lost it, you. And I'm like, Frank, just wank. He needs to just have a bit of a hand jibber, and then you know what? Maybe he'll feel better. I think Frank Castle is man most in need of a wank. He really is. Um, like, yeah. like comic book one especially, because he's so fucking two dimensional. <laughs> and it's like, it's like Frank, I will, I will literally buy you lubricant. Is there such a thing as like a kind of like? All right, Frank Castle interpretation in comics because it seems to be the in uh, comics. It's yeah, a bit he only funny. really, he only really, he seems to exist on this like kind of like binary thing of that he's either done really he's well. Either, he's either or the he's... Punisher first series like Netflix season, or he's, he's like the, uh, he's the worst. Well, I mean, there was a couple of ones where you know, like there's a bunch of police being like, "Yeah, we love you, the Punisher," and he like tears their stickers off and just tears them up and goes, "I am not a, a hero." If you look up to me, you are a fucking shit cop. And he's just like, you know, basically like, hey, alt right, fuck off. <laughs> like, hey, fuckers, stop using my Literally, fucking symbol. Jerry Conway, the fucking co creator of The Punisher, has actively, like, he did the whole, like, lifting up artists of color to try and rebrand The Punisher skull as more of a kind of, like, yeah. So there was loads of, like, charity Black Lives Matter. Like, Punisher skulls. I have one of the t-shirts because it's like, fuck yeah, I'm going to have one of those. I mm. love the Punisher. I fucking, yeah, Black Lives Matter. Perfect. Love it. Can't get enough. And it's like, yeah, he's like repeatedly told all right Punisher fans to fuck off. John Bernthal has repeatedly told Punisher, like, all right Punisher fans to fuck off. Like, they literally have it in the, co I mean, to be fair, these people don't read the comics. They don't consume the media. They just sit there and go, hmm, like... Like fucking commodified man pain. This makes me super powerful. I'm gonna go and buy a gun and basically just shoot anyone who isn't white or fucking whatever. <laughs> they they like they like what they think the Punisher represents. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, the Punisher as a character has a lot of caveats, a lot of problems. He is he's not a good character, he's not a good guy. He's not a hero. He's not a hero. But it's the whole kind of, like, protagonist problem where just because someone is a protagonist it insinuates that they, you know, the things that they do maybe are the actions of a good guy. Well, I just think Just because they're the main character. I, I, I don't think it's so much that. I think it's more that when you um, view a cat, when a character is a protagonist, you are you are incentivized to see from their point of view, so it makes their actions seem more justified. Well, I mean, I guess because you're, you know, you're, you're privy to their internal monologues, so you yeah. understand a lot of their motivation. Yeah. No matter how flawed that motivation might be. Yeah. But anyway, I would definitely fuck the Punisher. <laughs> so they got real serious. So you would you you would fight the Punisher. I, I would fight, fight a literal cartoon baby. Matthew, drama. what what fictional character would you fight? I guess I don't know. I'd want to fight someone <gasps> who like. Wanted you to should fight. fight the goose from Untitled Goose Game. Oh no, I'd lose so badly. I know, but God, wouldn't that be an awesome well, it would be story? Quite funny. Yeah, it would be quite. And then funny. no, no, you could fight, and then realize you're evenly matched, and then start like, just like the passion of it all, I don't... and then you could like destroy a house while you're fucking. 
We could. And but then afterwards, think... you could just lie back and go, fuck a duck. And then uh, go, okay, yeah, okay, fine. You've sold it. You've sold it. You've sold it. <laughs> all, it took, all it took to angle Matt into full on bestiality was a good pun. Yes. <laughs> I, I could even agree to it at the start with A up me duck, so it's perfect. <gasps> oh, A up my duck. And then, you know, you get a big, big erection or whatever it yeah. is. I don't yeah. know. This Although, podcast has gone to some weird places like, already. Like, And what? Yeah. Um, all right. Follow, this is strangely a good, good segue following on from the, the not from the duck fucking, but from the, politi- okay. the political segue we just fell down. Okay, um, okay. Pineapple Fantastico. I figured I'd oh, ask no. how you're all doing right now. I'm fine, but a little stressed given that my country's capitals just got stormed. Speaking of which, if you haven't covered it already, what was your response? Well, I mean, I think we kind of dove into a bit of it with the whole Punisher talk, but yeah. um, Yeah, basically kind of that. Basically, fuck the alt-right. They are fucking terrible. But what you you didn't understand, Snipe, is that Kevin Sorbo explained it really well when he said it's not actually the right, it's the left pretending to be the right. Oh, yeah, and it was definitely Antifa that stormed the fucking capital, like, whilst waving signs about QAnon. Fuck off. Okay, so um, if, if in case... Nobody has noticed. In, in case there's some people in the audience who somehow doesn't realize where we lean politically, uh, trans lives, like trans rights are human rights. Black yep. lives matter. Yep. Fuck capitalism. Fascism is yep. fascism is disgusting. Um, we believe in anti anti fascism f- is kind of just fascism. Like <laughs> yeah, uh, anti fascism <laughs> should be the default state of being. Like women's yeah. reproductive rights are really important. Yep. Um, not like trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary yep. people yep. are non-binary. Yep. Um, free healthcare for all. Yep. Uh, everyone should be fed, clothed, and have a house or have a fucking roof over their head and be taken yep. care of. Yep. Universal basic income is a fucking human right. Yep. Um, fuck the Tories Ooh, and yes. be good to each other and don't tear gas the f- the f- your fucking civilians. Yeah, yeah, that's something. Also, yeah. def- also defund yeah. the police because, like, we really need to look into something else because it's like you know when your only tool is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, um, that was a bit of a mouthful, but yeah, and we're sorry the whole thing on the Capitol happened and that QAnon just fucking exists, but you know, yeah, solidarity it's... will fucking like you know and like being intolerant <laughs> to the intolerant <laughs> will stamp them the fuck out yeah the real the real trick um with um it, it, it like to to get a little like kind of real about it for a second uh the real the real trick with um what's going on in america is that um effectively this rot was allowed to like fester in social media mm. for so long with nothing being done about it that something like this has been obvi- it was obviously going to happen everyone's who's like pays attention to this stuff is like this this has been due like this has been bubbling like it's started like decades ago and with how america's gone over the last few years it basically meant that it was inevitable and something big like that is going to happen was bound to happen and now it's just how it gets dealt with as time goes on yeah. and we're probably going to see a lot of smaller events happen like mm. that and um, just because yeah. there's a democratic leader that's like a um a Democrat that's been elected doesn't mean all the problems are over. Yeah, no, Democrats fucking suck. They just suck a lot less than yeah. Uh, yeah. The we say fuck the Tories, and yet the Democrats are more right wing than the Tories are here. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, I mean, the thing is, it's kind of like a well, it's not like okay, so there's like this, but it's not literally the fucking devil. So it's a little bit better, and unfortunately, <laughs> that's what we have. But hopefully, all of this will basically put pedestals underneath like significantly more leftist leaders and politicians so that you know it's america left leaning is the best you're gonna get i mean i'm talking just in general oh, okay. like people you know like care, in the uk we don't really have a leftist so party about yeah people yeah, who sit there and go hey maybe we should like give a shit about us our, our like our populace rather than just like 10 people maybe you who shouldn't just die sit on just piles of poor? money like yeah maybe exactly. i don't know it's like yeah it maybe like you know answer? being poor <laughs> isn't because you've just made bad choices and even when it is i don't fucking care just... everyone should just 
I don't get I don't get how it can be how anyone can maintain that it is a moral like they think well, they can because... have a moral position when their position is that some people don't deserve to have the same things as rich people because like poverty is not something that is down to an inherent moral flaw it just happens to people yeah but the, it, like, like a lot of society is kind of like geared and a lot of media is geared towards oh you're poor because you know because you're you've chosen not to go to you college yeah, you're exactly. lazy yeah. or because oh you got pregnant at 16 it's like hey guess what um that's an educational issue uh, like for the most part, and even then, like the, we shouldn't just be, we shouldn't yeah we shouldn't be fucking attacking <laughs> young kids for things that may that, that you know that have happened. These things have fucking happened. So what do you do? You fucking take care of them, hmm. and you teach hmm. like you know you you kind of it's it's society's issue, and we should all be dealing with this indiv- like, I, like stuff. Anyway, but yeah. I think that's that, <laughs> that that is the problem of that these things are things like what happened at the U.S. Capitol are a uh, they are a manifestation of these wide systemic problems. Of so many different um, little problems, and um, we're rapidly reaching a point at which shit needs to be done about them, and it means that you know just voting every four or five years, or if you're in, uh, if you're year, in, if, if you're, you're in, in Britain England. every year and a half, which is when we have general elections now, apparently, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to require more action than just simply voting when a general election rolls yeah. around. Which is, uh, it, yeah. I know it's exhausting, and it really fucking is. The emotional labor needed for this shit is horrible, and sometimes you just need to switch off. Like, just existing in a country where Brexit is happening is so fucking tiring yeah. all the time. But, you know, unfortunately, we've still got to keep shouting and trying our best. Yeah. And that sucks, but it is going to get better. I don't know what point we're trying to make. Just fight the good fight and, and fuck. And arm trans women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure yeah honestly I mean, we need a tr- we need a trans coalition to just wander around the streets just in case you know <laughs> I mean, i'd rather de-arm everyone but <laughs> i mean yeah that's fine we'll do that but i mean if anyone has to have guns i prefer it was like trans people just because come on it's like is there gonna be like a carrot poking I'm gonna over a bathroom stall being like uh, and it's like just yeah, you, know, you just slowly pull out a revolver. It's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, when it comes to like how America deals with its uh, with its gun problem, it is a problem that is. Um, oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm so complicated. Um, no, and, like I, I, I don't feel. Like, no, no, I am yeah. just memeing. I am yeah, just being I silly. I know. Well, but, so, the, yeah. but the but yeah. NRA are bankrupt now, though, so that's progress. Oh, that's good. Oh, good. good. Fuck them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, don't, I um, assume it was to avoid a tax bill and they reform under a different name or some nonsense. But anyway, yeah, let's move on. Um, yeah. On a lighter note, so this is back to Pineapple Fantastico. On a lighter okay. note, I started Dead Cells. Great fun. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Dead Cells is great. Um, yeah. Oh, and so, and finally, I believe I remember Snipe mentioning she relatively recently gained possession of a 3DS. Yes. Game, recommend- have, uh, game recommendation. Sh- Shayness is a good egg and sent me his. <laughs> oh. Game recommendation. He, he got a new one, but yeah. Yes, game recommendation. Go on. You, you probably haven't heard of these ones. Um, okay. Pokemon Black and White. <laughs> I'm sure you're aware. Pokey, but, po- Pokemon? But po- 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 Pokemon? Pokemon? It's, you know, it's nice to have someone say, you know, these games that you've probably heard of, actually, they are good. They're famous for a reason. Yeah. Is, I never is played the... Black and White. I haven't either. No. Which one is the one that you've got? Because you've got one of the like oh, relative. I have Pokemon Sun. Oh yeah, yeah. I think mm. that's that's like the only game I have for my 3DS, which is fine. I well, you've got to get a ton of three uh, just regular DS games, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I need to play some more Elite Beat Agents because oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's fucking old now. Oh, it is. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. Next up, Psychologist to the Astartes, which I like Hello. the name. Hello. Um, this one is also linked to the previous ones, but in a different way to the last one. Hmm. Snipe, if you Hi. were to do a cross-stitch for John Bernthal, what would it be? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say my initial knee-jerk. No, that's gross. Uh, I'm not going to send him... Oh, you just come! <laughs> and the U is a Punisher skull. <laughs> How will that even work? It wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, the M, like the the skull teeth. So it's come. Um, if I, oh, like seriously though, because like honestly, I do harp on that guy, but it is kind of a bit. And I just I just idolize him and think he's an amazing actor and a, a really cool dude. Um, I would probably like cross stitch him like 
something to do with Willie Nelson because he's a fucking weirdo stoner and loves Willie Nelson. So I just, I yeah, <laughs> I do that and be like, hi. <laughs> I know you messaged me on Instagram, but you know. <laughs> it was totally him. It was I'm, actually the real actor, John Burnham. And not just someone fucking with you. Yeah, no. It was someone trying to get like nudes out of me. And it's like, <laughs> I have never sent a nude, you dick. <laughs> But I mean, John Bernthal, if you want a nude of like Willie Nelson, just you know, you, you got my fucking details. Man. I'm I'm adequate at Photoshop. I can probably do that for you. No, I'm just gonna get actual nudes of Willie Nelson because like big old hippie like that, he's got to have his dick out in some pictures. He's Willie out. Come on. Ah! Yeah, so we did the nice one. Very nice. But yeah, that's what I do because like I am like I am perfectly happy in my relationship, and I know he's perfectly happy with his wife. And his kids and his 87 dogs and hanging out with Kurt Angle. So, yeah, I'd probably do something <laughs> like that. All right. Recommendation. I most, most Recommendation. Likely... Cross-stitch oh. something and send it to John Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> this one is probably aimed more towards Wiv. So, okay. Love, Lovecraft's Monsters. It's an yeah, audio book of modern Lovecraftian tales written by contemporary authors such as Neil Gaiman. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Um, includes a werewolf going to Innsmouth. <gasps> okay, now that's definitely for me because I'm a slut for werewolves because uh, yeah, they're true. super yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I love werewolves. It's for all of us. Yeah. Okay, a question. Okay. What di- so there's some background information to follow this up before you just name a random dinosaur. What dinosaur uh, would I be? What What would they be? What would they be? Yeah. Oh. I was confused with this because I thought it was. A, I thought they were... Um, Referring what's... to one of us as, with gender neutral pronouns? No, no, no. I thought that I was the um, rhetorical. I thought they were asking a rhetorical question, and then they started saying. I was like, "But you haven't answered the question." But no, no, no. <laughs> they're, they're asking us what would what dinosaur would they be? So I'm going to say a Parasaurolophus I, because I just like saying it. Yeah, and that yeah. sounds quite satisfying. I do have some vaguely mm. like useful backup information, so you See, can be I'm, a bit I'm, more targeted I'm... if you want. Oh yeah, go on. Okay, go on. so I prefer small groups or being on my own. Okay, I'm mildly grumpy, mostly gentle. So. But also borderline long fang size, and I'm as protective of his friends as he is. Hmm. What dinosaur yeah. is that? I I want to That's say like, I want to say Stegosaurus. I kind of want... big, pretty chill. Unless you fuck with them, and then, in which case they are going to open you up like a fucking can because mm. they're a can opener dinosaur. They can, are. can openosaurus, <laughs> and they're just really legit and cool. I wanted to say Archaeopteryx again because I just Archaeopteryx is like it's a bug. It's a bird. It's, well, it's not a bird. It's it's a it's but like, it's it's a little feathered dinosaur. It's apparently that's one of the uh, the links. But yeah, I would say yeah, I would say Stegosaurus because they're they're real chill and they're herbivores, but they will fucking destroy you with all the okay. those rad yeah, scoops. That's, that's, that's okay. a good answer. I, I could agree with that. Yeah, yeah. That's what about fair. you, given, Drumblebum? Given the information we know, I know I, mm-hmm. I I I can't have anything better. I think that's good. Mm. It was either that or a Moshops, which is a proto. But that, isn't that a Pokemon? No. Machop. That's Machop. That's Machamp. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> okay. Uh, and finally, um, thanks, Webb, for sharing the advice on playing guitar. And they're, they're just starting to learn oh, how to play the okay. banjolele, which is <gasps> oh, right. That instrument. is so fucking Mostly cool. because of the name, but also because it's a cool instrument, even if it was called something boring. I but, honestly uh, desperately want to play a banjo. Yeah. Because I love the way I tried once, sound. and it's like... It's not as easy as it could be, as it seems it should be, to get a really fun sound out of it. You've got to do, like, it's proper, like, cowboy picking. You've got to, mm. like, pick all the strings individually. Yeah, you can't like, just go pick uh, it up, like, knowing how to play guitar, and then get a good banjo yeah. sound out of it. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tricky. It's Alternately, if, if you know how to play a ukulele, then you know how to play a banjolele. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, banjolele is such a fun word to say. I, I, I would like to get one sometime. I just want to get a banjo, but those things, they start out quite expensive. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you don't want to get the cheapest. You always want to get, like, it's like wine or alcohol. You want to get the second, second cheapest. Ne- <laughs> you never yeah. buy the cheapest of an instrument. Never. No. Oh, Otherwise, you know, you get string snapping, bridges fucking exploding. That's how you end up buying a Starcaster from Argos. Oh, my my brother's first proper skateboard was from Argos. He snapped the kingpin the first time he took it yep, out. Yep, that'll happen. Pink, kingpin just bang. Yep. It literally snapped in half. We could we could only find one half of it because yeah. the other half went so far. Jesus. 
Yeah, fuck Argos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Hardline stance against Argos. I'm I guess. angry at them because their yeah. weights. Like I, I, I need some like uh some weightlifting weights, and they just refuse to like. They literally go, oh, check if we're delivering to your area, and every time I do, they they aren't. No mm. matter what it is, and I'm like Argos. Fuck you. Which is weird because, like, you know, we we do not live a significant distance from an Argos. So no, we live within like a like you know relatively close to like I can think of two three Argoses that are nearby. Yeah, and they're just like, no, nah, I'm not going to deliver it to you. Do, will they just not deliver to you? Are, are you like a, is like, like a, a I'm pol- on the no delivery. Is there list. a Polaroid behind the desk that says do not do not don't deliver believe to her person. lies? Yeah, don't believe her lies. <laughs> I mean, maybe I don't know. I can't. I don't. Can't imagine what I would have done to anyone at Argos. I'm always pretty chill and friendly. Mm. I don't even remember what the question was. What happened? Something about Argos. What happened in that question? Oh. We started talking about you being banned from Argos. Well, there was, it wasn't even a question. It was just saying thanks for the guitar advice, and then you went. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That happened. Yeah, yeah. Lib does that. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, everyone. You're welcome. He's a tad <laughs> Okay, um, Olivia Rose. First Hello, lovely prim- name. Pri- hmm. First Primark casting choice. Seth Everman as Alpharius and Omegon. I, I do not know who that person he's is. He's a, a, a bold musician man. Oh, okay. He does, oh, he's the on the does internet. The, um, where he's, he'll play a piano and just stare unblinkingly into the... Uh, yes. Yeah, no, he's pretty well, cool. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, the context is his ability to be so chaotic while maintaining a flawless deadpan astounds me. So that, yeah, that, that yeah. is that is a fucking mutant power right there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah I understand that. That's mm-hmm. fair. Okay, secondly, a question. So I've often okay. noticed that Warhammer 40k borrows a lot from other stuff, like Dune and real world history. Yeah. For example, yes. the Ultramarines of the 13th Legion... And sees a Costa Rubicon with the Thirteenth Legion. Navigators are straight out of Dune, etc., etc. I find this to be amusing and annoying in equal measure, like a bad pun. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What I want to know is this: What are your favourite slash most egregious instances of this? If you've noticed any? Uh, well, I mean, the whole Men of Iron thing is pretty much stolen to- wholesale like, from Dune. That's just like one one, basically. Um, there's a lot, uh, uh, yeah. When you're talking about like Dune, so much of it is stolen from from like the basic kind of premise of it. I mean, like the different, like you know, like like they there is an emperor, and yeah. There's a golden throne, and you know, Baron Harkonnen is there. <laughs> um, you know, there's. <laughs> I'd say my favorite is Inquisitor Obi Wan. Oh, I was going to say Cluso. that. No, fuck off. That's my answer. <laughs> okay, I feel, I feel that's a bit too obvious, though. <laughs> okay, okay. The you know, I've been like. Occasionally, I'll pop into 40k Reddit, which is not a fantastic place to be a lot of the time. Let no, me be it's honest. not. It's awful. Um, where someone will come around and go, oh, what's, what's the silliest bit of lore? And after that video of you basically going, hey, this is a real fucking Inquisitor, suddenly everyone there is like, that's the answer all the time. <laughs> I so it's, it was, yeah. you have popularized it, you fucking binge. So... The fact that, oh, it's sad. Oh, of course you're going to answer that. Fuck off. No. <laughs> I I think that uh, Marbo is one of the most on the nose. Like Marbo is, is a significantly less fun. Because him just being Rambo. Like, mm. him being like Rambo 3 Rambo as well. Yeah. Like, he's, he's very just Yay, over the top. PTSD is... Very marketable. Although saying that, they do they do occasionally, like the early stuff especially, like really did um, cover him as being very, like, you know, him having, the, him just being fucked up. Well, no, it's just him kind of like, it's like that whole, um, like, bit of fluff from the Katachan, um, like, codex, where it's like, oh yeah, he's just completely like, like but borderline catatonic but then you put like you give him a knife and just chuck him into a war zone and suddenly he lives he and comes it's like, alive it's like okay that's yeah. kind of sad really it, it is a funny thing because there is so much like 40k uh, was effectively just made of like um, the a bunch of weirdos in Nottingham uh, throwing together uh, a bunch of references to things they liked or found interesting, and just kind of. I mean, to be fair, it. we are we are all the amalgam of everything we've ever encountered and liked. Yeah, yeah, and I think there is, um, like, so, sometimes there are some that I think where it is very on the nose. Like, like I guess you know the the Marbo, the the Dune references. Um, 
But some, I think, work quite well. Like, I mean, the, there's a lot... Uh, I mean, uh, Chaos um, as, a, as an entity is largely stolen, as far as I'm aware, from Michael... Michael Moorcock. Yeah, Michael yeah. Moorcock's work, uh, which I've not read, so I can't speak in... in um... Yeah, Moorcock. <laughs> My, my dad actually gave me a book of his the other day like a doctor who book that michael moorcock wrote i'm like okay cool i was like is this the same michael moorcock i'm thinking about and he's like yeah it's the same one I'm like okay <laughs> um but uh oh, your dad's cool <laughs> he is real cool um apparently occasionally listens to this podcast so i'm sorry oh, dad if you just listen to our whole conversation about come jesus christ <laughs> Hi, Mr. Ward. It's me, your daughter-in-law. That's to be fair. Sorry about all the con. I... <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Um... <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm pretty sure like, you're apologising for your like, your teenage years. I'm just, apo- <laughs> just apologising. I'm just apologising in general at this point. I ate. Um, it's like, he he knows, he he knew what I was the moment like, I fucking <laughs> encountered him for the first time. Yeah. But, uh, but what I was going to say was, like, you know, a lot of the chaos stuff does come from, there's a lot of Michael Moorcock in that. Like, the eight-pointed star, that just comes from that. Right, straight up there. Um, but there is a lot of, like, Lovecraft in there that I think is integrated in a relatively subtle way. I mean, the warp is very Lovecraftian. A, yeah, they borrow a lot of Lovecraftian stuff, and I think they do it without it being so on the nose. I think that actually does work quite well. That's very influenced without mm, just yeah. directly lifting, and yeah. I think that's kind of cool. See, influence is fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just the whole kind of, like, yeah, like, Man of Iron, like, straight, and it's like, okay, fine, whatever. I know it wasn't, it was done out of love, it wasn't done maliciously, so, like, whatever. Oh, yeah, who cares? Like, yeah, whatever. Like, <laughs> but like yeah, there's like you can six see... stories, and they've already been told. Might as well have some fun. Yeah, with and you can it. see yeah. how it easily happens when you just like, yeah, faffing about with ideas, and you get presumably a garage somewhere when they're first coming up with this thing, and it expands and expands, and at some point it's this like global, you know, dominator of tabletop gaming, and they suddenly <laughs> have to be like, oh wait, that was a, a weird decision we made thirty years ago in your shed or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see it as like you know when you're playing, like you're trying to write a song on, on guitar or whatever, and you're like, yeah, I really love this riff. It is, it is <laughs> so. literally like, oh, this, this like this is an offspring song. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, it's it's that kind of thing where. You you can even subconsciously be like, yeah, this is really cool, and then later go, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, it also helps if you're like me and you have a very sporadic uh, knowledge of history, so uh, all of the historical references in 40k largely go over your head. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. Next up, Henry. Hello, One word. Henry. Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. I love Bulbasaur. So much. Oh, boy. Is great. I love honestly. Added, like my, f- I absolutely love Charmander. Squirtle is fine, and I absolutely love Bulbasaur. Squirtle and can be I cool, remember though. Squirtle. Now the thing is, like, I still really like Squirtle, but but I prefer Charmander. Like, <laughs> Shanus, um, he bought me a. It was like quite a big sleepy Charmander, um, off Amazon, and a plushie. It's like a big plushie, but it's like it's like a sleepy Charmander. So he's like lying on his tummy, and he's got his eyes shut, and he's smiling. And he's so fucking cute. He is the best pillow ever. I love that sleepy Charmander. And I was so upset because Bilderbear, like a good few years ago, had a Bulbasaur, and it's honestly one of the best Bulbasaur plushies I've seen. And it was big, and I wish I'd got one because they don't do them anymore. No. I, did, I, I think I did literally say, do you want one for, like, Christmas that year? Yeah, but that was when I was still like, don't spend money on me, I'm garbage. Yeah. I mean, more so. What I've, what I've learned um, is that uh, I, that was around the time that I learned that whenever you say um, no to something, I should just do it anyway because yeah. you actually want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fair. Yeah, Bulbasaur's yeah. great. Bulbasaur is great. Ivysaur and Venusaur are trash. Um, yeah, I really don't like Venusaur. And the same with Charmander. Charmander's great, and then Charmeleon and Charizard are the trash. But... They're his, cool, his, but they're not... going towards my favourite Pokemon. Squirtle's great. War Turtle is excellent. Peak Pokemon. And then and then Blastoise is trash again. Mm. What's your favourite Pokemon? Me? Mm-hmm. Probably War Turtle. War Turtle's amazing. I like his little ear thingies. Yeah, he's really they're cool. They're like cute little earmuff things, and I like <laughs> it. It's really cute. Very lovely. Sorry, boy. I was just formulating that thing in my head, being like, about the starter Pokemon, they kind of all get worse, but Squirtle doesn't. I mean, anyway. I mean, I like I like Blastoise because um, it reminds me of Gamera. 
I mean, it, uh, it's yeah, I mean, Gamera. Yeah, it's Gamera. Yeah, fair. Okay. And I also, okay. I like, I really like Blastoise because it, it reminds me of when Pokemon Go was still really early, like, like really new. We were driving, you, me, uh. and like we we're, were driving down a country road and i was just idly like looking at my pokemon go and i just just i grabbed the fucking like headrest because i was sat behind you and i just went there's a blastoise here and you were like fuck and then you did like a handbrake turn into the into a side road and both of us got out and we're like <gasps> and then we both caught it and it was really cool yeah it was yeah, i still that, got him okay, and he has okay, yeah, he's that was like, a good time He's like CP eight <laughs> hundred. Yeah, he's fucking useless. He's fucking useless. But I was just like, <laughs> like it no was just stars like, at all. Yeah, no stars, and it was just like, oh, honestly, I love it. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Oh, Henry had a question as well. Has okay. Lord George recovered from the trauma of being on the battlefield? <laughs> oh, like people recover from trauma of being near Lord George. No, I'm joking. <laughs> he's a good boy. He's hanging out with his little brother Chernobog. Um, and they're, they're, he's, he's been taking it easy. And These just... are large plushies, by the way, to anyone that doesn't know. Well, I mean, like, Chernobog is like three and a half feet tall. Yeah, I think to he describe him as a plushie, huge. he's technically a beanbag. He's I think. technically a couch cushion. Yeah. He's, he's Do you quite... remember when I brought him home? <laughs> he's... And you were like, what the fuck? Did you just go out and buy the biggest one that you could find? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it does. Or like for tax reasons, it probably counts as furniture. Like, <laughs> I, I love Chernobog. He is my beloved furniture boy. Because <laughs> I thought Lord George was the biggest thing. Went no, no, no. Uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a good one, Victoria Rose. Hello. I don't know if this would be an appropriate question to ask on the podcast. Strong start. But good. what exactly was the meaning behind the song "Lesbians" that you're about? Um, it's, I it's a good, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't ask... yet. So, it's a good okay. song, okay. and I'm a lesbian, so I automatically like it. But it's nice. well unorthodox. <laughs> Why yeah, do okay. the sand people give the queen a sandy ass? What does that even mean? Okay, let me let me explain. <laughs> so the reason it exists <laughs> is the reason it's about space lesbians is me. Um, I like we were just standing around in practice, and I was like. We should make this song about lesbians in space, because I was thinking of, like, the Asari, and how, like, from Mass Effect, and how cool they are, and how they're just spesbians, and how cool, like, space stuff is. I was like, and Dicko was like, okay, and then Dicko wrote that, because he's Dicko. You know, you can just say, whenever there's, like, a why is that song that you, you wrote, why is it like that? We can always just, when it comes to lyrics, we just say, Dicko, we point at him and we blame him. No, we, I definitely blame him for the sandy ass part. I mean, like, it was just kind of like... Because I was kind of like, okay, so... Is it like a... Like, is it a gesture of peace? The sand people... Like, <laughs> to, the sand pe- to the sand people, which I presume are Tuscan Raiders. I, yeah, um, I always thought there was Tuscan yeah. Raiders. <laughs> um, I, I, maybe it is a sign of peace? I f- I'd like to think it is, yeah. Well, I, yeah assume no, don't... I assume they're like boning and they drop trow and drop onto the sand floor and bone and that's what, and I assume maybe that's, that's what's happening. Maybe that's that's the thing of peace. They were like, hey, um, do you want to do a fuck? And they were like, yeah, go on. And then unfortunately the side effect of that is sandy ass. Yeah. yeah. Um... That's kind of my head canon because I don't want it to be anything like uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, don't no, get me I wrong. Think it's, I think it's just that. I think it's just... Yeah, I don't you know... think there's anything more uncomfortable than a sandy butthole. Yeah, sex on the beach is like not a great idea, really. I've heard it's like it's like the idea. It's like when people are like, "Oh yeah, having fantasies is great," but the moment you live it out, you've got like a fucking like you get a toenail stuck in your foreskin or whatever. (laughs) I mean, I am just. I mean, that is because your fantasy is to uh, have sex in a pile of toenails. So you know. Yeah, because it's it's basically it's the hygienic bones. Um. It is neither of those things on a very fundamental level. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. They did, they did say if we could say anything about how the band write songs, because the lyrics are <laughs> oh, badly oh, weird. But oh, the lyrics friend. are nearly all dicko. Um, yeah. Sometimes yeah. one of us will have a bit of an idea, and like, yeah, this song would be about space lesbians, and then dicko goes, falls down a lyric hole for a bit. And... Yeah. But the lyrics are almost exclusively dicko. And they are available printed off on the cd versions of the albums although when you, you might be able to get one of those again who knows yeah. well because they all just live under our bed at this point <laughs> yeah like dicko <laughs> um 
But Dicko's yeah, we, quite we, happy now. We, in case we, anyone's we, wondering, he's a he's a very happy bird dad with his um with mm, his girlfriend. Yeah, who is a bird mum. <laughs> the funny thing I I like about the lyrics is that we don't we quite often don't know exactly what they are until it comes yeah. to record them, and we're like, oh shit, that's what you say there. <laughs> yeah, and then we're like, Dicko, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, Granny's was was a good example of that. <laughs> Every single time we play Granny's live, and we get to the <laughs> staring at my wiener, wiener, <laughs> like every time we get to that, I fucking lose my shit. And like, I don't like. I'm sure like there's some people in the audience are like, you've been playing this song for three fucking years, like at like least. It's not funny anymore. It's not funny. It no, it it still is because there's like, the occasional person who's like kind of like you know. Like nodding along really serenely, and then they just kind of stop and go, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and it's always funny to see that kind of the, the penny drop, and them go, "Did he just fucking say that he came in his grandma's face after she was like, yeah, your granddad's dick is way bigger than yours.' <laughs> is that what that fucker just said?" I'll just say I'm really glad that song is very easy to play because it's it's like four fucking chords. Like, it's so, <laughs> yeah, it is like I. I spend most of it like hurting my gut because I'm trying not to laugh because yeah. yeah. it look. I don't want it to look like I'm pretend. I'm like, oh, look at our funny songs. Like, no, genuinely, this fucks me up every time yeah. we play it. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, um, Victoria Rose's favorite Pokemon is also Bulbasaur. So, popular choice. Good choice. Yes. Good they they choice. have one in their in their um, leaf green save called Marjoram. Oh, hmm. that's really cute. Okay, next up, Rob. Rob, I have to apologise. Rob sent her through a very long email full of very detailed casting suggestions from lots of 40k characters. But it was so long, I was like, that's going to take like half an hour to read. And it was so detailed, I couldn't pick out like any particular highlights because it was all pretty good. So I just oh, put damn. nothing. So oh, apologies. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was some uh, very so good yeah. ideas in there. I'll, send, I'll you, make sure Rob. to send it through to Snipe and Web so they can see it. But yeah, yeah sorry, Thank it was you, too long Drama to read Matt out. Drama is a monster. I am a monster. Okay, <laughs> next up, Nick. Best Pokemon, Magnemite. You never lose your keys. <laughs> yeah, but then all of your electronic devices is constantly fucked. Yeah. Checkmate. <laughs> Checkmate, the person who wrote in kindly to us and didn't yeah, expect to be defeated by us, apparently. Uh, yeah, I have, <laughs> we def- yes, yeah, yeah, I've defeated them. <laughs> that's how that I've, works. That's how that works. <laughs> Okay, that is interesting. Question. I don't think I've ever actually heard anyone um, like have that as their favorite Pokemon. That's you interesting. Know, I like Magnemite. I like Mag. What's the tertiary evolution? The big one. Oh, the big flying yeah. like, saucer. Magnezone. Yeah, I really like yeah. that one. Yeah, it's kind I, of fun. Yeah, I finally got he's just, in Pokemon Go. He's just ridiculous, and I've got like on Pokemon Go, I have like a really quick charging like metal attack that is just what, perfect for what mincing. Happens? Like, so you have one Magnemite, and then it evolves, yeah. and there's somehow three of them. Is it the same, yeah. the three of them bunched together, or is it, like, the same one split into three? Yes. And then when he goes to Magnazone, do the three, like, get forced back together again? Well, to I mean, the, 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 I, the I law thought... around the, like, Magneton is that they they all kind of gather together because there's, like, positive and negative kind of, like, charges. So, they, oh, okay. like, Magnetons are, for, are, are basically made when a... Bu- it's like the, um, the slow bro thing, when, like, a cloister... Bites okay. Okay. the tail of a slow bro, so that. it's like that. I so it was a, sh- a shelter. I, I thought it was a shelter because it's a little one. It's a little one, yeah. So mm. yeah, but, but like, no, it's so it's, it's kind like, like having that. three gears. Though you can't have like two positives and a negative. I guess they, all three of them aren't touching. You just have to have like a chain of them. I don't know. Maybe. And then do they do, do they just anyway? They probably. Should I think you are well. thinking more about magnetism than anyone has ever thought. Well, that's because he knows about, like, like like scientifically about this shit. And yeah. He's trying to like logic it out, and it's like you like can't you can't logic that. it out. Pokemon logic is its own. Yeah, I mean fair. Pokemon fair. logic okay. is an oxymoron. A question from Nick. Okay, I've, Nick. I've been a GM for a while now. Nice. And a constant theme through all my games is that the players will only RP to the NPCs. And they'll rarely... So when they speak to each other, they'll rarely do it in character. Oh, okay. So whenever they're planning to do that, they'll talk out of character. How do I encourage them to RP to each other, but without, like, sounding like a nagging teacher? Give, like, basically, like, it's like training a dog. <laughs> so like just just what you get a little bit of meat and whenever they uh whenever they uh do, do something good you give them a little bit of meat and a little scratch behind the ears <laughs> now you see what you just said was completely fucking accurate but you just swap meat and scratch behind the ears for like an inspiration point uh yeah that's what they're yeah, there I mean, for is, is yeah 
It's, yeah. it's it's the big delicious salami to hang over the player's head. So basically, you ignore bad behavior but reward good behavior. Yeah. So like, I... like any time like one one character, or just like make a fuss of them and basically like that was some really good role playing. You know what? You gain an exp- you gain an, gain an inspiration point, and then they'll be like. I'm being rewarded for this. And then basically you keep doing that and then you slowly minimize how many inspiration points you're kind of giving out and then they'll just start doing it by habit. I Literally guess, like training a puppy. I, I guess you could also <laughs> if... Um, um, so obviously we don't know, also, your, we don't give, know your game. Yeah, um, give them fries. <laughs> just go, that was good. Have a fry. Have a fry. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, cause obviously don't know the game that you're playing and so we don't know if you're already doing this, but like if you... It feels like one way one way to sort of in, in, instill that is to... Suck your dick for a role play. Include elements of their character's backstory okay. within your actual story. <laughs> Sorry, just hearing drama, Matt, just acknowledge what I just said. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm ignoring, yep. I'm ignoring... Um, because then, if you're um, if you're integrating that into it, it's meaning that you're basically asking them to do their do their role play within the story. And if you're ma- and it means that like people like yeah, but it's role playing with each other. Yeah, not, no, because not... I'm getting a plan. I'm getting somewhere. Oh. Um, which is that because if you're making them do that, and then you're making that character's like background be part of the wider story that other NPCs are talking about, it means that the other characters then have to start talking about that character's backstory as well. And that feels like that mm. might be a way to sort of, like, start nudging it in a bit. Yeah, but also give them, like, little bits of ham. But also give them little <laughs> bits of ham. that You store it, store it in a little pouch in your pocket. Yeah. And yeah. remember the scratch yeah. behind the ears. That really yeah, helps. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. That's good. Um, oh, right. Or alternately... But not um, to one of, like, one of my friends, I'm not going to name them or anything else, um, literally, their ears are so oversensitive that if you poke them, they will have an orgasm. So maybe just make sure that you're not playing with somebody who has like a bit of anatomy like that. Like who basically don't play with a Ferengi because uh, yeah. my friend is obviously a Ferengi. <laughs> <laughs> you should. They don't like wearing clothes, and you touch their ears and they come. I mean, I mean, in general, you probably just shouldn't like out of nowhere start fondling your friend's ears anyway. Like yeah. you know, check, unless check, you've check, got check. that kind well, of that's, friendship. That's, that's what session zero is for. It's like you know, what sort of world do you want to play with? You, you know, are you happy doing it in character? <laughs> You probably shouldn't play as this sort of race okay. really if you can. Okay. And do you like to call me if I touch your ears? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. You're like, oh, that's what Session Zero is for. I have a friend whose screen name is Session Zero. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> What's he got to do with this? They're a very good artist. You should find they them out fan- on Twitter. They're yeah, very good. Zed draws. They're amazing. And they do commissions as well. So, <laughs> But okay. yeah, no, it, that completely threw me through a loop. But yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Moving on, and I'm going to sort of try and put a bit more of a focus on some of these now, just because we've still got two pages to go. Oh, oh shit! Okay, shit. okay, okay. Let's let's <laughs> rapid okay. fire. So, rapid fire. Melange. Here's a not complete list of my favourite Pokemon in no specific or is it order. <gasps> okay. Toxicroak, big poisony friend. Yes. Mm-hmm. Trubbish slash Garbodor. It me. <laughs> <laughs> Esper, a cat version of Psyduck. Yep. Yeah. Need I say more? It's very cute. <laughs> um, they also have a web, web webcomic recommendation. Okay. <laughs> Awful hospital, parentheses, seriously, the worst ever. Close parentheses. Okay. So a webcomic about a trans-dimensional your hospital? Hmm. Weird interdimensional nonsense and a surprisingly heartwarming story. Oh, okay. I'll check that out. Thank you. Literally. Um, con- I, I, con- I, content warnings for hospitalization, body horror, existential dread. <laughs> Thank you for the content warnings. Yeah. That's very helpful. Um, I literally, uh, I've got to a point in my life. I used to read web comments all the da- all the damn time. Like I, I had I like have three that I read, like Oglaf. twenty odd. Yeah, Oglaf. literally the only one I read anymore is Oglaf. I, w- I read <laughs> Oglaf, Gunner Creek Court, and How to Be a Werewolf. And I, I would like read like uh, manly guys doing manly things, but she's yeah. stopped. She hasn't mm. posted in like two years, which is fine. SMBC okay. is excellent. I periodically catch is up with Is he still it. doing one per yeah. day? Yeah, Fuck one a day, me. and they're like the quality of them is somehow ridiculous. Like There is very, very rarely a day where it's not brilliant. Mm. Sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long, but, you know. Same. And he's sort of sle- like sneaking in a bit more sort of, not quite politics, but like that sort of thing. I think I'd really get on with the with the, the artist if we ever met. Mm. Mm. Zach um, Wiener-Smith. Yeah, excellent name too. Mm. Um, 
It means Smith of Wieners. Yes. Um, next up, Mountain Man Jeremiah. <laughs> Great name, dude. Snipe. Hi. Thank you for teaching the boys how to pronounce Appalachia correctly. <laughs> Appalachia. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Jeremiah, and I'm sorry that he fucking sassed you. I mean, I had to. Come on, like, I yeah. had to. I had to. Um, um, thank you for teaching us how to pronounce Appalachia. You also come visit someday. I would love to. Oh, I'd love amazing. to go. Mm. Oh. Um, Very pretty place. Wib and Matt, train game suggestion. Yes. <laughs> Sunless Skies. I feel like we might have been recommended this one before, but I anyway, think you've played it's a that, dark fantasy, dark fantasy steampunk game where you fly a locomotive around space, trying to preserve your crew, cargo, and sanity from dying gods, giant bats, and librarians. Yeah, the, this is like part of a series. I think I've played the one that's boats, uh, Sunless Sea. Yeah, I think yeah, Sunless no, Sea. Oh, yeah. they also do a good job with pronouns, apparently, which is going to. Oh, good. Oh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, I, that's it. Sounds really cool. Um, Big Titty Goth Girl. Hey, titties. First off, my favourite Pokemon is Sphil. Sphil? How, how do you? I've never said that one out loud. Sphil. Sphil. It's a circle. It's a they very orb. cool seal. Their baby. Big round blubbery tusky wet boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. That was my nickname in college. Oh, and I, I know it's a bit late, but my fave dinosaur is a Kentrosaurus. It's like a small. St- it's mine... a small Stegosaurus. Mine is oh. a Henchosaurus. <laughs> Is a henchosaurus a, a, a hench stegosaurus? No. <laughs> no. Okay. It's just like it's a kentrosaurus, but it's well hench. Okay. Okay. Good. Slang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kentrosaurus, small stegosaurus, mm. but with more spikes. Okay, um, I love them. They're very cute amazing. and baby. Um, question: Have you all ever considered or planned out a cursed model conversion, a la the great clean one? And if so, what is it? Slash, are they? <laughs> uh, I have not. Uh, no, no, I have. Uh, I, I have like when I've been in the uh, gluing together phase, I have kind of like gone through my bits box and just been a twat, <laughs> but like never glued anything or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah, I, I tend to. I, my my conversions tend to be um, like a little bit more grounded. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And the like, great I, clean I just... one is horrifying. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. It is. <laughs> oh. Why is it so smooth? I, I, he's a very smooth baby boy. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's the great clean one is like Angelica's imagined like kid brother. <laughs> Ugh. Um. All right. Next up, Smug Monk. Hello. My, my favorite Pokemon. It changes almost every time, but as of asking, it is a Zubat. Zubat. And a Zubat line as a whole. Mm. So was the first shiny Pokemon they ever encountered. Aww. Um, shiny Zubats are legit. <laughs> and also, like, I like Crobat. And I like Golbat because it's just Golbert. stupid. Golbat yep. is so stupid. It's always shocked. I literally have one called Jeff Golbat. <laughs> because. That doesn't even work as a pun. I know. No. I know. <laughs> because I'm not funny. <laughs> But yeah, good choice. They're very... Um, oh. I don't know. Zubits are really cute because they don't have eyes and then they evolve to have eyes. And I'm like, mood. There I should, be, there should be a once. further evolution that has too many eyes. <laughs> too many eyes. <laughs> that's that's Magenga. And it'd be an eye bat. Oh, fuck off. Good. No one's oh. going to get that. <laughs> so Smug Monk also wrote what, the, um, what their favourite dinosaur was. But they Ooh, put it in the subject us. line. So, you know, who knows? Oh. Oh, who knows? <laughs> Oh no, poor monk! Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, they, they, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. I'm not what falling if... for the bait. Chapter Master Startdale. Hello. Thanks for the recommendations for fantasy board games. Um, they looked through the list of recommendations and they they're going to get Escape from the Dark Castle. Hmm. Ooh, clever! Clever purchasing choice um, there because it is very fun. It's fun. They have a cool cartoon recommendation from Netflix, Hilda. Mm. I have heard fantastic yeah, heard things. Very Isn't, good things. That's the one with Laura Kay as like the main character. <laughs> yeah, she does look a lot. She like looks Laura a lot Kay, like Laura yeah. Kay Bones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's awesome cartoon set in a sort of fantasy world. It follows a young girl who moves with her mum from the forest to a city. It's funny, Aww. engaging, and damn positive. Aww. So yeah, no, it yeah. sounds it sounds really good. I've heard lots of I good things. I have been meaning to watch it because yeah, I've heard so many good things about it. Uh, anime recommendation for Snipe. 
Mm-hmm. Girls und Panzer. Oh, it's no. It's surprisingly wholesome. No. Considering the plot involves schoolgirls driving World War II era tanks into battles. Okay. Okay, because But I've... don't, don't, don't look up fan art. <laughs> it's an anime. Yeah. Trust me, I, I won't anyway. But yeah, no, it reminds me of Panzer Medals. Which is a really shit dating sim where it's like you you're the only boy at this fucking like girl tank school where all the girls are representative of tanks and it's just fucking horrible. And like there's literally like a German like tiger tank and she's like, I was never involved in the Nazi part or something like that and it's like, Yeah, ha, huh, that's really funny. Uh mm. Germany is more than than its mistakes. Fuck off. It mm. was really tasteless and it really pissed me mm. off. Like immediately I was super mad about it. Fair. Fair. It was weird. Uh, so yeah, I might look up fan art of it, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, uh, and a question. So I'm okay. trying to plan a kit bash for my homebrew chapter master, but nice. I'm a bit stuck on where to start. Do I sketch out a plan or design first, then see if we can get the bits to make it happen, or should I look at kits and then try and work out how they might go together that way? Um, I would, um, as a recommendation, there's a couple of ways you can go. Uh, you can try and make something from sort of whole cloth of just, um, you know, look at what bits you've got available and sort of try and build something. It, build like a rough maquette. Yeah, it really depends on what you want to do with them. Like, it's one, one simple way is to take an existing character model, like, say, Marnius Calgar or what have you, and... Um, you know, swap out bits to make them be whatever you want them to be. Or take an existing, um, like, captain or lieutenant model and then elaborate on them to add aesthetics of your chapter or what have you. Um, It it really depends on what you're trying to make. Because some things are a lot easier to do than others. Like, if you want to make, like, a a regular-ass marine... Um, it's really easy because <laughs> obviously rude. there's been <laughs> several decades of parts made for them in a million different varieties for different chapters, and so you can generally find a head and a body that will or, and a pose that will match what you kind of want to do. Um, yeah, but uh, if you want to go for something like say a Terminator, you're a bit more restricted because there's mm. less Terminator models around, yeah. but they're still out there. Um, I, I guess like a simple thing is to like look through existing like models and see what poses and what Frankenstein it. And yeah, what war what gear you works. want, and then um, you might find that either it's something that you can just make out of parts, or you might find it's something that you might say you need to take a character model. Um, like, like say you want to, I might want to take Shrike and make a model out of him. You know, like that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I have the opposite thing of like, you know, they mentioned sketching things out first, so I design my characters and then just try and find the closest bits I can mm. to make it work, which is fine if you don't want to think too much, but it's also very frustrating because nothing's going to be exactly how you want it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Like, yeah, I that. when I do it, I tend to just, like, rummage through my bits box and assemble things in a way that I think I think is fun. That's what I do, but it does tend to leave you with characters that are maybe a little generic looking. But then I'm not a huge fan of super overly ornamented marines, yeah, yeah. so that works out okay for me. So, but. yeah, I, I hope that helps <laughs> at all. I yeah. mean, Drama Matt just buys them off eBay and then just has <laughs> They're lefty. They're pre-converted to have Rox's feet, so it's fine. Yeah, which is honestly, let's be honest, I did some conversions. I, made, I converted my broadsides into like sensible broadsides before the new broadsides came out. Yeah, well, you did, actually, and they were Wow, I said legit. broadside far too often. Not so too <laughs> broadside, broadside, broadside. <laughs> yeah, I made a like machine gun one and a sniper one. Which were way yeah. better than the m- mounting on shoulders thing. Yeah. Very, oh yeah. I honestly, cool. I forgot that that uh, the, what regular I broadsides f- look like. Yeah. Because... No, I, I forgot that those were like like drummer Matt had made those. Yeah. So I just thought that's what they what the well, they do now. Like. They, they, that, that's what they do look like now. Yeah. They copied um, you. Sue. Okay. Yeah. Sue them. Okay. <laughs> next up, Ro- Robo or Robo? I don't know. Apologies. Hello, Lo. Ro- Robo. I'm going with. Ro- Ro- <laughs> Hello, Ro- rotate Robo. Rotate your owl. Okay. Dino- dinosaur suggestions. They're getting a bit fancy. Fave oh. sauropod is a Camarasaurus because nice. it has a big, thick head and a relatively stubby neck for a long neck. Same. Favorite theropod is the Allosaurus because of walking with dinosaurs. Yeah, I get that. Fair. And I get favorite that. favorite Theriophoran dino. Yep. Is the Stegosaurus because big booty, small brain. 
<laughs> Same. <laughs> Head Excellent. empty. No thoughts. Head empty, but full. <laughs> but full of love and mainly pastries, I'm going to be honest. Uh, oh, pastries. Oh, I literally okay. I, email in what your favourite pastry is. Yeah, what your fa- like, and we're talking like you know, is it a Cornish pasty? Is it a steak bake? Is it a donut? Like wait, sweet oh, and no, savoury pasty. I was more thinking like you know croissant or pan au chocolat. Oh, or, croissant! You know, I'm still not over that, that croissant sort of... you bought me from when you were living in France. Oh man, yeah, I <laughs> shipped them back to you. I was like, I'm coming back. I'm, I'm flying back. Well, the, the, the bus stop was right by the bake, like the bakery. So I was like, oh, I'm totally just gonna turn up at their house with like freshly delivered. French pastries. And it was they great. Well, life changing. I'm not even the biggest fan oh, of croissants, but like they I were great. Love croissants and those were amazing. Okay, we had a um, recommendation for you, Snipe. Oh, cool. Okay. If you haven't listened slash watched the series on YouTube, Technique Critique. Technique Critique is, is that a like really a porn interesting thing? series. If series you look from... <laughs> here, he's not coming to his maximum potential. <laughs> no, no, it's a. Interesting series from Wired that started with a dialect coach called Eric Singer, and he did a bunch of their first videos on actors performing accents, dialects, and portraying historical figures. And it's super that's interesting. That's really cool. What was that again? Uh, technique critique. Okay, that's really cool. It's easier to write down than it is to say out loud, seemingly. Yes. <laughs> but no, thank you for that. I'll have okay. To check that out. Last two. <sighs> but first up, Barbie comedy. Hello. Two quick suggestions. Mm-hmm. Die Hard, Nakatomi Plaza. It's a 2002 FPS that recreates the first film. Oh, okay. I'm surprised I, I ain't heard of that. Yeah, I don't know how big it was or if it's like a fan thing. I, I have no idea. Hmm. Um, we'll check it out. And yeah. then a board game, X-Wing, which is a Star Wars board game. I'm on board. I've I, heard I, it's I totally... very good, but isn't that one of the ones that like costs an absolute goddamn fortune well, to get into? Well, yeah, we're already you... paying a goddamn fortune for 40k. Because so. I've yeah, got you, one you, you ship. You buy I... pre-painted miniatures, so I imagine yeah. it can be expensive. But I think if you don't have that many, they're like I think they're still cheaper than Warhammer models, to be honest. They're not. Are they not? No. Okay, I must have seen some in a sale somewhere. Um, I've got one that I got bought. I think it was by Longfang. Uh, yeah, it was by Longfang, which is a B-wing uh, because it's like one of the few yeah. B-wing models you can actually get. Um, yeah, no, they're really expensive. Uh, um, yeah, it for, looks and they're it's quite like small. Really want to play, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's a fun game, but um, mm. but yeah. Um, High cost. Uh, we should do it on, it would not be anywhere near as satisfying, but we should have a game on Tabletop Sim or something to see what it's like. Yeah, yeah. And then, then if you really like it. And then it, inevitably like, fall yeah. down the rabbit hole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the advantage to me is that I have no time at the moment to like paint any of our models and I have a constant like guilt hovering over my head, but this, pre-painted miniatures. True, yeah. true. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but then the problem I have is that if I get a pre-painted miniature, I'm looking at it going, I would have done that differently. True, true. But I, look really at my, I look at my own models and think that, honestly. So. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <Right>? Okay. <laughs> um, a question. Three of you are hanging out. Post-COVID, yes, we are. Obviously. Mm-hmm. When you are all swallowed by a portal that dumps you in the snow, you look oh. up to see bolters aimed at you and space wolves holding them. Space wolves, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Space wolves. That was my, that was my pronunciation. Yeah, you're being terrible. One raises their hands to stop their comrades and looks at you. They suddenly shout, "The chosen ones! The chosen ones have arrived!" And they all kneel in front of you. What do you do? I become the next chapter master of the space wolves obviously i become the wolf witch of fenris like i am supposed to and i hang out all day and play board games with with my my wolfy bros and you guys of course i'll be like oh yeah they're my uh (laughs) they're they're my uh my handmaidens or whatever i don't know what the male equivalent is Uh, serfs (laughs) yeah (laughs) slaves with jobs (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, no, it's like these are my bros, so they're coming too. And I'm, I'm literally going to throw my hands up and go. Finally, some recognition. <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to hop on one of their shoulders, and they're going to take me to McDonald's, and I'm going to get us both a McFlurry, <laughs> Space McDonald's, Space McDonald, McFenris, <laughs> War Hamburger Forty Thousand, War Hamburglar. <laughs> You gotta watch out for the Warham burglar. You gotta watch out for the Warham burglar because it's just a pro- it's just Marnius Calgar with this double fucking power fist that comes in and just fucking turns you. I don't know. I feel I feel Alpharius is the Warham burglar. The Warham burglar. Yeah. Okay. That's it's, that's that's what happened with Alpharius. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a big sack yeah. with hamburgers written on it. Yeah. I think he was Antifa. <laughs> I, I think he was Antifa. He's going rubble, rubble, rubble. 
Oh my god. Anyway, what what next? <laughs> Jesus. Okay, next yeah, move on. Samus, very last questions. So Hey Samus, I think first... um they they are gonna be asking what they asked in the stream yesterday. Well they they said, Oh, have you recorded the podcast yet? And I was like, oh, possibly, no, yeah, this email tomorrow. was probably from ages ago, so because I I only check the emails the morning of recording, usually. I know, because you're garbage. Mm. No, I'm yeah. joking. I am, but also like, we, no, no, we're like getting like quite a few long garbage. emails at the moment, and I, I still e- I still reply to them. So yeah, like, no, I'm not better than I do. Garbage. Not yeah. total garbage. I'd, not, I'd say you're like really fancy garbage, like you okay. know, like yeah, recycling. Yeah. I'm the evolved garbage, garbage one, with a I future. Like now. Hang on, garbage on. I don't know. Yeah, garbador. I'm not rubbish garbage anymore. On. I'm garbador. <laughs> um. So anyway, yeah. So first off, to answer Snipe's very important question, favorite Pokemon is a tie between Rowlet. And Pikachu. Good choice. Pikachu, because I'm Gem 1 trash. I mean, aren't Same. we all? Aren't we yeah. all? And uh-huh. Rowlet, because they're a, they're, they're a little bob. I, I love Rowlet. Rowlet is such a sweet bob that evolves into Frederick Knudsen. It kind of does. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that I always find fascinating about Pokemon in general is that, like, Gen 1 birds were they in are general so powerful were in general not so great like in design you know mm. Pidgey line wasn't so good you had like yeah, Spiro really Thero like they were fine but they but weren't they were great pretty good but then after like Gen 1 they kind of really hit their stride Starly and... is S tier and every time I, I see it in Pokemon Go and it kind of like has the camera above it and then it goes down it always looks like it's going ah it's <laughs> doing like the, uh, the the capital D like colon face where it's yeah. like ah and I just think it's really cute and like yeah, Rowler, Rowler is powerful. very strong. Um, Star what, Startling. There's like the one little... you literally just said, Starly. Star, Star... Me Fletchling. I think Fletchling. That's, what, that's the bitch. Yeah. It's called. That's the <laughs> very <laughs> cute. Yeah. Like yeah, just just solid. Uh, fucking um, the the just, fire one. Just solid fucking. <gasps> Torchic. Torchic. Torchic is. Oh, Torchic is great. So, I have I have a fucking like a perfect IV Torchic. Buddy in Pokemon Go right now, and his name is Ned. You know why? Why? Because he's all upper body and no legs, <laughs> just like Ned Kelly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> get it? Yeah, not everyone will yeah, get that no. one, but the right people will. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they're real. So, they got real solid at bird type Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, after the evolutions the first are one. still like. Mm, Sometimes like, the, the, the cuter, tricky. like especially with tertiaries, like the cuter the first line in the evolution is, the uglier the like the final evolution. Will Quite be. often, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, Blaziken's kind of just. Sh- I'm so, like, like I'm so fucking sick of cute starter turns into a weird like. Turns into a Digimon. It t- no, it turns into like a fucking <laughs> bipedal humanoid thing, mm-hmm. like Incineroar or whatever it's called. Like the evolution. Of- oh, it's a, the the fucking yeah. It's it's like it's got like a fucking. Like it's got like a fucking wrestling belt on, and it's got like pants, and I'm like, what? It's a big buff. Where's man? the it's, cute kitty? It's Tony the Tiger. It's I don't like it. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> getting a lot of uh, tangents, Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So next up, a um. Second. Okay. I've always found the late December slash early January to be a very difficult time mental health wise. As the weight of the previous year and all its shortfalls, shortfalls is an understatement, tend to yeah. hang heavily. So to counter this, I've been doing my best to focus on the good memories of the year previous. So I was wondering, what are your favourite memories of 2020? Hmm. I mean, my favourite one was seeing that fucking statue go in the river. I fucking love that. Yeah, <laughs> but, that um, something Brist- more, pers- so something more personal. <laughs> so proud um, of Bristol. I would say yeah. my favourite thing well one of my favorite things that immediately comes to mind is back when it was like you could do this um we went to visit our friends ash and her wife sarah and their kids and we had some really nice coffee chatted mad shit like ash and i like i did ash's makeup and i did i did the little little girl liara's makeup as well (laughs) and then she did like a little bit of my makeup and then she got bored yeah and it was just it was just a really (laughs) nice day because like you know we hadn't seen them in in so long and it was just nice to hang out and just exist with people like and pretend mm. the pandemic wasn't happening uh, honestly mm. that has been one of the one of the things um, it really makes all... you appreciate just being with 
people. Yeah, all nice. kind of, all kind of like joking aside, just like the few times where last year we were able to like, like we just... went and had coffee with like Cat and, and Dog Boy. Yeah, like we went, we went and did that like for one day, and that was, and that was just really nice, just to be able to like just, just exist. There. It's really making like for all all the untold human suffering of uh, of the mm. pandemic and just twenty twenty, even outside the, of that, the being the silver a lining that we have to take otherwise yeah, the, we'll go insane. What, one of the positive things is that it does make you appreciate the little things. Um, that previously you'd sort of just not really even think about, and yeah. yeah, just being able to just go and have a coffee with friends, to go round to your, go round to like some friends' houses and just hang out for a bit, yeah, like just just exist with other people for a bit, and it's yeah, or like what was it, drama Matt very, very morosely pointed out that I don't know if I said this on the recording, but we helped um, a couple of people push their car up a hill. And so Wib and I were pushing, and then there was like the other lady next to me, and she slipped, and I grabbed her around the waist and pulled her up. And Drama Matt very morosely stated that was like a really like lovely half hug, which is mo- more than most people have gotten. <laughs> and I'm like, you've made it weird, but I mean that's fully accurate. <laughs> And I was I wasn't being like creepy or anything. I was just like her legs were dragging along the fucking floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I needed yeah. to it's help her. It's one of those ones up. where, like, you know, the moment of like the safety of the moment it does actually take yeah. precedent. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, to be fine. fair, I was wearing a face yeah. mask as well, which I know it's not <laughs> it's not super good. But the thing is, we needed to help people up an incredibly icy hill. Yeah. So I would rather help out than not. Yeah. 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 Anything to help that lady escape her mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, we're calling out that one random woman that got stuck on a road near us and we helped out, who didn't say thank you. Her kids had to. <laughs> well, no, yeah, like, like you know, she's like the uh, the older daughter said thank you and the, the younger one was just like... Well, she just, was like 12. So she was know, like 12, whatever. so, you know, like, whatever. We don't care. But yeah, and, and she was like, no matter what we were saying, and like, hey, maybe you should go this way. She just kept driving up the exact same place and compacting the snow even harder, making it even more impossible. For her <laughs> making to it into a hill. smooth sheet of ice that she could not traverse. And then she would be like, the ice is too sheer. And then they'd be like, yeah, because you're driving up it. And then she'd just keep doing it. And we're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> We are glad that you are not having to stay at your children's house because yeah. I'm sure your children would not be very happy about Cause this. Because like, the oldest daughter, who is like 25, she came up to us and was like, hey, uh, do you know about parking here? Because otherwise my mum won't be able to get home. And I was immediately like, I understand. We will help you up that hill. I will not let you suffer your mother any longer than you have to. It was very fun. Um, but yeah. Uh, so Wib, yeah, do you I have got- an answer? We're Wibblich. Uh, I don't know if a really specific one. Or is it just um, kind of like a similar one to mine? Yeah. Just like appreciating human con And like little things like, you know, like, yeah, a hug. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I live with you. I get to hug you all mm. day, you know, but like, it's it's like the whole kind of thing of like, yes, I, I, I love you and you're awesome and I married you and stuff and that's great. But you can't spend 100% <laughs> of your time with, with somebody because... It's just not good for you. So, like, yeah. going out and, like, hanging out with friends or going and having... I, I, I do, like, like the couple of times when I went out on my cheat day and I had a I had some donburi and some duck gyoza. Ooh. Ooh. And it was just really nice. And then I realized afterwards, because lo- loads of people are like, oh, if you're one of those freaks that goes to a restaurant on their own, and I'm like, I was... I wanted to eat lunch and I wanted to eat a nice lunch because it was my fucking cheat day. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's like the same kind of people who think that going to a movie on your own is weird. And I'm like, if you want to see a movie, just fucking see a movie. Yeah. It's like, I mean, not right now, obviously. But... I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pandemic notwithstanding, but yeah. So it was like that, that, you know, just, just that kind of stuff. It was, it was just nice. And like, you know, the, the sporadic contact with friends and family was like, you know, Definitely more enjoyable because of how rare it's gotten. Yeah. So yeah. Did you have any Matt? I can't remember. Um, well, I mean, I wasn't 
planning on particularly mentioning this on the podcast, but I had a baby, so that was quite a big thing this year. Yeah, he had this baby. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I guess, like, I wasn't, I've not been avoiding mentioning it, but I wasn't explicitly going to make an announcement, but also, like, I'd feel disingenuous in answering this question in any other way. So, okay. you know, yeah. there's that. Um, that's been okay. a quite a big part of this year. It, it's a good thing you said <laughs> that, because, like, I was also for, like, a really great memory. It was, like, the first time we met your baby. <laughs> was great. I mean, like it sucked. We couldn't give him a big cuddle, and oh, like know, we right? couldn't give you guys a cuddle. But just like sitting six feet apart in the park and just hanging out with you guys and 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 Babu and Drumbeb was <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> it was so good. Mm, it was lovely. Yeah, it's it's been a time. But and now yeah. <laughs> baby looks so much like you. It's frightening. <laughs> Probably. It's like, big gentlemen, behold, a miniature me. <laughs> um, moving on, just very quickly, very last point, and then it's my bedtime. Okay. <laughs> Thirdly, quick game recommendation. Okay. Please don't touch anything. Okay. Either the original, the original two D or an updated three D version. It's a. Oh, I thought you were just telling me not to touch anything. No, I have that, um... that too. Wow. I, I have played the original. Please don't uh, touch okay. anything. It's a for those that don't know. It's a laid back puzzle game involving you covering for a friend while they use the bathroom, and a very big shiny button. Okay, so um. okay, Samus knows how <laughs> I am, and that literally the moment you tell me not to do something, I'm going to fucking do it. It's like yeah. biting Wib's elbow and being thrown around the the bedroom. <laughs> It wasn't a sex thing. I was just bugging him because he hadn't gotten out of bed yet, and I was just like, "Wait a minute, is this still was this still a Samus question?" Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. I've, so, I've, comp- I've completely lost track of all time. That's fine. Oh yeah, it, yeah. Because yeah, Samus knows that that is that is not a good game for me to play. You should play it. Because I will yeah. literally never do anything. Well, is, is, is this a, is it an online game or is it a? I'm just... Nah, it's just a single player little thing. Oh, okay. But yes, thank you. Um, and then that you. is that is the questions we have we have finished. <sighs> Ooh, that question was a, marathon. The, the back, that the was a lot of questions. Of questions. That it was, was a lot of questions. It was. Thank you so much for all those questions, everyone. That... Don't ask that many next time because we won't answer all of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, I I have no filter, so I'll ask you them all. But who knows? Yeah, I I, <laughs> yeah. I think if if we get that many again, like it was yeah. fine because we finished up nice and early. But if we get this many mm-hmm. again, we will have we to start. Have to yeah. yeah. And the question I want to ask everyone. Who's going to send in a question? And as, an as well as the pastries, as well as well as the pastries is, if you could eat anything from a fantasy setting, what would it be? I remember I was talking to this in a sexy friend. way or in a, in a, like an actual no, just just way. a just I'm going to just consume it. I want okay. to eat Kirby. <laughs> okay, he just tastes yes. like blancmange. <laughs> yes, he looks... but no, I, oh. I I remember having this conversation with a friend of ours, Plasma Dragon, and he said that. Uh, the conjured mana food from WoW looks really good, and I'm like, it really does, and I would really like to yeah. uh, like to have that. So yeah, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. That's yes. how you pronounce uh, thank it. Thank you, and sorry about all the cum. <laughs> I'm not, Dad. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about all the cum, Dad. <laughs> Um, okay, so if that isn't the <laughs> title of the podcast, like, sorry about all the cum, Dad. <laughs> See, I know I, I can I can picture your dad's face right now, just looking at you like, I'm not even disappointed, I'm not even surprised. You're just a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see yeah. it perfectly. I can hear him saying it. But yeah, so Excellent. long and thanks for all the cum. Uh, uh, yeah, good. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs>